Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Black Box Late Tackle Crossover with myself as Mr. Mark Southerns and Mr. Andy, my inbox is too full north. How are you Andy? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was okay until I went on a, my, my, went to go and get the emails and it said you're using 28 gigabytes of your 5 gigabytes oh, you it's all those, more storage. Is it all those team leaks you're getting via email? <laughs> That's what it is. No, they're in my secret group chats, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> why, aren't, why aren't I in these bloody secret <laughs> WhatsApp chats? Because it's a secret. Uh, That's why. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah. Mark, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, looking forward to the weekend. I'm not going to the Forest game, which I'm gutted about. I've basically been too busy at work. I keep forgetting to get the tickets for Forest in time. And of course, we sell out these days, of course. Mm. And so no. I haven't been to a home game now for a couple of home games. So I'm a bit gutted because Liverpool will be a good game. So but yeah, I'm still looking forward to the weekend. And you're having trouble uh, expanding the ground. I hear. Oh yeah, we were trying to get some. (laughs) We were trying to get shipping containers in the corners. (laughs) What luxury! (laughs) eh? Who needs the Emirates? (laughs) And um, and apparently the council gone. No, 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 no. no. Apparently they're a bit shit anyway. But yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, swearing already! You can tell it's a Friday night. (laughs) (laughs) I've only had tea. Is shit swearing? I I think. I think. I don't think it is. I think for once, Andy, Mark is Mark is the brightest one of the frivers. You've had half an hour of trying to get into your emails. I've yeah. come down with a fever earlier, and now I'm kind of just about making it. Mr. Mark Southern's got his cup of tea. He's absolutely flying. I'm on form. <laughs> it's on form. <laughs> We've got Billy's comment on the middle of the screen, which I can't get rid of. That's another good one as well. Just click on a new one. Uh, but they'll go away. Uh, who should we have? Uh, let's say hello to people in the chat. Uh, FPL Sandman. There we go. Evening, guys. Uh, good to see you. Uh, wh- 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 it says Keith Hill. We saw a, I saw a tweet earlier, which was, I hope one of the three of them won't be doing the Huang to Son move this week. <laughs> it's like, We're all doing oh, it. we've all done it. <laughs> As a spoiler, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, good to see you, everyone. Let's get straight into some content. We've got loads to talk about, uh, as we always do um, on this channel. Let's start with, as we always do, the points uh, from last game week. I was bottom of the pile, uh, I believe. Um, with another absolute crap show, I won't even say the S-bomb, uh, with Martinez, Trippier, Gabriel and Estupanan all failing to deliver anything. Uh, Saka, Foden, Watkins all doing fine. Haaland with just an assist. And then Huang, Garnaccio and Slanky. I mean, what do you make of the Huang thing? Because that was a proper... We've like... got to have an inquest, haven't we? <laughs> what, we've, was got, we've got to have a post-mortem on Bowen versus Huang. What went what, wrong? Why, why did we all... I mean, we all went for Huang because he's an out of position player playing the worst team in the league. But I was on the FPL show and I said, I think Sheffield United could, you know, they'll lose, but I don't think it's going to be three or four nil. And when I ranked the midfielders in order, I put Bowen at the top. So why did I not even consider him? I don't know. That makes it even worse for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Andy and I were just carried away by the, the damn content creators. I don't know about you, Andy, but they yeah, just convinced me happened. to go. Yeah. I just listened to Az. Az was like, I'm getting Huang. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do then. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. We, that, was, that was back in the time where we thought there was a possibility that maybe Bournemouth and Wolves would play in the blank. Mm. So that was obviously something, wasn't it? And obviously Bournemouth held up their part of the bargain and lost. Uh, and Wolves obviously didn't. So that, that didn't help us much there. But Oh my God, what is going on with Andy's I really don't know. today? It's, it's Yeovil's internet again. Andy, it's like you're, you're in like... The Matrix. Like you've got I don't like know a... what's happened, to be honest. Clean oh, we're losing his sound well. and everything. Oh, right? no. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's going to be one of those streams today, is it? Bear what? with us. Bear with us. I think, I, think in, I think Wang, you know, and everyone's saying like he was still a good pick. Of course he was. He got injured in a warm-up, which really didn't help, did it? Mm. And that clearly troubled him. Um, he did see out most of the game, but he was very disappointing. But walls were terrible. I, mm. I mean... Sheffield United weren't, I don't think they were brilliant. They played okay, but Wolves were just lacking ideas and they were they were really nervous second half. It's like they didn't want to get out of their own half. They were just like, oh, we'll, we'll take the 1-0, mm. thanks very much. Um, not what we expected. So, yeah, and, and, and obviously, obviously we didn't expect West Ham to win as they did either. Um, so it was an over before, underperformance by Wolves, basically, an overperformance by West Ham. I mean, West Ham were miserable to that point, as was mm. Bowen. For, for, for several weeks. And I guess Bowen's record this season would suggest he was going to break out of it and find form 
when I say form, get output <laughs> eventually. It's a bit like the Saka thing, isn't it, when we were on the verge of getting rid of him. But Bowen really did test the patience for those who held him. Congrats if you held him. Congrats I, if you went there. I'm way. amazed people still had him. Like when I looked around, because I always check like the Elite 64 to see who's who owns these players. Mm. And there was about six or seven people still with Bowen. And I think two of them maybe had bought them this week, but the others had held him through all of these blanks that he'd be, had been going on. Um, so yeah, fair enough. I, I wasn't expecting. I was, I was saying on, on the, on the Q&A earlier, like when I look at the games of, of what Bowen's got, like with, with Brentford, with Everton, I see those as two kind of sit back kind of teams and, you know, defend kind of in numbers. And then against Burnley, that would be a more open game. So if you were picking one for Bowen to like go mad in, you'd think it would be the Burnley game. I, I just didn't see it coming in the Brentford, Brentford mm. match. Andy, you back? I think so. Good. Have you, have you have you done yeah, anything, or have you just, are you just going with the ignore it and hope this problem sorts itself? No, out? clean feed keeps dropping, so I have to keep going back on the link and open it up again. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds fun. That you're going to do that for two hours? Yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, it'd be nice. fine. Yeah, yeah uh, I've enjoyed would you, worse. Yeah, what do you make of all this, uh, Andy? With like content creators, because content creators are getting uh, slammed again. Doctor David, yeah. it's the same content creator tyranny at work. Uh, group think <laughs> says the heroic doses. Follow the leader, says M. Darrowell. I mean, it's you know, all Lazzy's fault, says Scout Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I remember like last week when I was looking at the fixtures, I straight away thought about Huang. And then I do wonder if maybe I was just completely blinkered by the mass kind of hysteria around him. And it's very easy to say this with hindsight when he's black. Like, if he gets a hat trick, no one's going to be complaining or saying anything, are they? But yeah. I I don't know. I'd kind of thought, well, I'm not. I'm going to be free hitting in 29 anyway. Who's got the best kind of short term fixtures over the next three? Wolves. Who's got the most potential out of that midfield? I think it's probably Huang. So, was it a mistake? I don't know. I th I think it's tough to say it's a mistake. Obviously, the injury doesn't help, and it's kind of made everything look a lot worse than it probably was. But like I've always thought with this whole content creator thing, if you made a poll in a complete vacuum and asked everybody to vote on what they want to do, most people would go with those moves most mm. weeks anyway. And I think, actually, I think people just want content creators to be different sometimes. And actually, we're, we're just saying the most obvious move we think is what mm. we want to do. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know who they're really talking about when they're going on about content creators. I'm assuming it's some of the guys with 200,000 views on their, you know, streams every well, week. Well, it's, but... it's just a blanket term now that's applied to kind yeah. of people in general isn't it or like anyone on twitter posting their moves it's kind of i don't know i mean like i i looked at sarabia and neto for example and i would really yeah. have liked to have gone for one of them but yeah. it just felt like going different for the sake of it because I, yeah all this all I, the signs pointed towards wang being the best option yeah i mean mark and i looked on late tackle didn't we we, we brought up the three players and we said that wang was easily the best one in terms of the stats and also he's playing up top so it just made and sense to obviously go mm. for him yeah but you look at you know when you're looking at it just in one week anything can happen in one week obviously but yeah it's, it's just how it happens I, I think um the, the the annoying thing is now obviously the injury so I brought in KDB for the double didn't do anything then brought in Wang for KDB <laughs> and obviously he then got injured so it's just wasting transfers that's the thing that hurts the most but mm. yeah it is what it um, is heroic dose is saying content creators e equals slippers yeah, that's all right. So slip, it was slippers. Slippers fault. fault. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. I yeah. can go with cool. that. We'll take okay. the credit. So it's not our fault. Yeah, we'll take the credit if, if we say it and we get it. But if it does go as wrong, then we just blame blame slippers. Yeah. I mean, slippers bought just, in Bruno Fernandez. He's, he's trying to start a bandwagon there. I don't think that's going to take on. We can just blame the person on the stream with the lowest rank each week. No, absolutely not. Yeah, I hate yeah. doing this stream with, with both. Why are you both having such a good season this year? And Luke <laughs> as well. There's four of us involved in this show. And you're all absolutely smashing me. Uh, and also, Billy's beating you as well. Oh, and great. He's, he's kind of involved. Now he's doing the thumbnails. It's so. a shame he's oh. not closer to your rank, because then you'd start sabotaging his team like you do every year, like forgetting oh. to tell him about deadlines oh. or advising don't, him about to buy injured don't, players. Don't break it to him, because he's <laughs> in the chat. He's smart enough to know. So, hold, hold on. I, I, I think, I, have we not got a question why we didn't go Bowen? Because under normal... So it's, it's so funny. It's almost like I didn't consider Bowen, because I felt that was basically doing planning for Game Week 29. Mm. And I, and it almost because of game week twenty nine, I avoided him, rather than just look at him in the because he was up against Brentford. Their defence is obviously very weak. We'll mm. see the day to the day, and they've gone mm. down as a result of that West Ham performance. So I think we just 
got to look at the fact that we did overlook Bowen too. It's not just which Wolves player. It's why didn't we go Bowen? And I, I, it was all down to his form going into that game, his output going into that well, game. And West Ham's bad. output yeah, as well. West, we, West Ham was shocking. I mean, the, the key thing was Paquetta obviously being back in the in the yeah. starting eleven, And mm. I, I think we, we, we knew he was training, but we weren't sure whether he was going to go straight back into the side. And if Bowen had been on the right of Antonio up top, he wouldn't have got a hat-trick. I mean, he might have done, but I, I seriously mm. doubt he would have done. But you know that's his first... Uh, first career, his first first career hat first trick. First career hat trick. Yeah. yeah, and also it's only is that only his second double figure return of the season as well. Mm. Even in a season where he's had a good season, so it was a massive outlier as well. Typical FBL, isn't it? Really, in that mm. respect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, when I'm on the FBL show, I said my moves were going to be uh, Darwin to Hoyland and uh, Kabore to Eight Nori. Um, and then obviously that got scuppered by both the Hoyland news and then De Bruyne being benched. Um, as well. So I'm playing a tiny violin here. I think I got shafted this week and I'm on a red arrow, <laughs> 70k. But if I'd bought in eight Nori and done my original moves and not had leaks and injuries, I would have been fine. So what, just, just bloody game. I'm, I'm quite proud of you though, pr- that though, as. Oh, this, this is, is the what, first. What are you going to say? What, what? Here we go. We know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've streamed with you this year and your, your rank's been only six figures. There you go. <laughs> There you go. I'm incredibly proud of you. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, looking down from your ivory tower. Honestly, I think I needed this humbling a little bit because last week I was like, <laughs> right, top 100k, I'm going to catch Mark. Like, it's all going to be great. And I've slipped down again. It's kind of oh, like, don't oh, worry. We'll got, give you a humbling, won't we, Andy? Got to stay in the top yeah. million. <laughs> <laughs> a good going over with the humbling, don't worry. Yeah. He keeps dropping he's on the FBL show. That's about three times he's mentioned that. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm on the FBL show. Does anyone else think Az looks like Jack Whitehall since Connor Richard? Oh, Why do you think I get invited on the FBL show? <laughs> 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 Maybe that's why I think uh, you think they're inviting Jack Whitehall on Az. I, I, I think I've told this story before, but I once I, I get told it all the time. Um, mm. I, I When I was uh, lecturing at, at uni, I had uh, my students at the end of the year do me a card. I didn't. I didn't have them do it. They they did it themselves voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> homework. Was it homework? <laughs> but it, it said th- it said thanks, Jack. Like thanks for the year, Jack. And I was like, my name's not Jack. And they were like, oh no, we just call you Jack because you look like Jack Whitehall. That's the first one. And I once had a man in a full blue pinstripe suit come up to me at an airport and say, did you know you look just like Jack Whitehall? <laughs> and I was like, I did know that. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so, yeah. It could be worse. I get told could I look be. like you as. So. Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> By a man in a suit at an airport. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you look like that as fellow. <laughs> very true, very true. Uh, MR Donkey says, what's the aim for end of season rank? Oh, I don't know. 100K, optimistically, would be nice. Oof. Um I haven't got the bench boost, which I, I'm looking at everyone's oh, rank really? and thinking I'm You're 20. Not. Don't mention that. Did I mention on the FPL show? <laughs> <laughs> there he is again. There it is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 100k would be nice, but I'm aware that I'm I'm like 20 points behind. I, I, my main aim is not to get relegated from the Elite 64. That's kind of the, that's always the thing each each season. I got relegated mm. once. I clawed my way back in through the, um <laughs> through the, uh, you know, the, the second division. Um, I don't want to leave uh, again, so... Yeah, well, I got so. relegated. I'm trying to get back in it. So, yeah, mm. I need to restore myself to that. You know it? Highly. No, I'm in the second <laughs> division. I'm in, I'm in the qualifier league with, with General himself. General got relegated too. So I'm basically trying to get in there. You're doing what, yeah. I, what I did, relegated yeah. and, then, and then clawing back um, yeah. straight in. Uh, Sam Makerson says, uh, you sound like Stephen Merchant, Andy. <laughs> you look a bit like him as well. Where's well, the see accent, that. I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, I had another thing to point out. You know, remember Alan, that guy who hates me? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a new, that... there's a new guy that hates me. <laughs> oh, is there? <laughs> but he says that I keep saying, um, kind of, all yeah, the time. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Do you I? Do quite a lot, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, he was like, you said it 25 minutes, 25 times in the first 10 minutes of my team selection video. I listened back seven minutes in. I couldn't hear it once. Absolutely rubbish. You're blind to it. That's what it is. Oh, you're, you're, yeah. You can't, you can't hear it. You can't oh. hear yourself. But it's like I'll, Andy's I'll... for me. For, for, yeah, me. for me, for me, for me, we'll get a and lovely. Every time I say, say lovely a lot as well. Yeah, do, actually, yeah, oh, yeah it would be good. As looks like more Jack, like Jack Black. God's sake! Right, let's move on. To Jack, Black. yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Mark, this is your team. Talk us through it. Uh, yes, yeah, not not great from the Magpies' defence. Dubravka zero, Trippier zero, Gabriel two, Walker zero. Oh dear, my defence is defence is awful at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely awful. Yeah. F- Foden eleven, He Chan um, three. Saka 20, Bailey 12, Bailey the 
the, the outlier, really, the one who got me the higher up the green arrow. Uh, Watkins 9, Solanke 2 and Harlan 5. Um, yeah, all right, happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm annoyed at myself for not considering Bowen more, more carefully um, because... I really, you know, the opportunities to go different. And when the, when the crowd are all going wang, why didn't I think, oh, maybe there's something to be gained by going bone? He's not like a dreadful player, but it was the, the form going into the game. And West Ham's form. Was, we'll look tonight, and West Ham's data is still bad. So, um, yeah, I didn't really see that Brentford performance coming, or Brentford capitulating like they did. Mm. But I've got to be happy because Bailey did the business against my team. It was bittersweet because I was watching Bailey and Watkins dismantle Forest. So. Mm. <laughs> but I did I did think that Bailey would do well against us. And we, as it is, we'd, we played a centre-back left-back. I don't know why we did that, and he just destroyed us. So um, yeah, And a, uh, a sack of captain, despite a certain Mr North. Very, yeah, very much tried. trying to talk you out of it. I'm going to yeah. the game. My mate thinks there's going to be seven goals. Me, it's going to be a goal fest. Yeah, exactly. All that nonsense. I wasn't buying any of that, was I? People in the chat game, oh. don't listen to him, Mark. Try and try and go with your instincts. And oh, it only look. got me five points. Could have been a lot better, though, couldn't it? I know. Could have been a lot Sorry, better. just to mention, Nigel Crabbers give you five oh. memberships to the channel. That's uh, that's really kind. And that is, I prefer that to Nigel giving us yeah, uh, keep doing that, more Nigel, super chats. And giving us yeah. money. Thanks that's a really lot, Nigel. Really, really appreciate that. Mm. Sorry, Mark. Go on. Saka. Saka 10. Yeah, I, I think I could have got more out of that, going being brave with the captaincy. And uh, he had a very good effort first half that was well saved by Carrius. And then, um, yeah, there was a few chances he laid on, which could have been... I could have got at least another assist out of it, I think. So, a bit unfortunate on the day. Harlem w- went off early, 75 minutes, which is rare for him. He looked so very went, frustrated yeah, didn't he? in that match. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So, um and then, you know, he's been off form, hasn't he? He only got the five against Luton. So mm. you can tell he was up. He was, you know, off colour a little bit. But yes, uh, I could have gone better for me, but I'm happy with a 64. Um, so Andy has decided to leave the stream <laughs> just before we get to his team. It was obviously so bad. He was like, he can't face it. He's got to leave. <laughs> I've got those three of us and not, not just two. Andy, where have you gone? Is he still on clean feet? Can you hear me? Still? Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Is it because you can't show what? your face when we're about to bring your I team up? No, it's not I that <laughs> Just kick up. I mean, my video's on. There you go. There you I don't oh, know what's dear. going on tonight. <laughs> we'll get through it. Bring Andy's team oh, no. Let's see how yep. bad it is. Come on, why, no, can't he, why can't he look it in the eye? It's in the oh, middle. Right. Bad. In the yeah. middle of us. Right in the middle. Yeah, mine was all right. No, I had uh, 56 points. I had Ariola in goal. Uh, Saliba. Saliba got two. Estepinian got one. Mitchell got five. I was very happy with that. Mitchell coming back in with me again. Uh, Taylor got one. <laughs> it was looking like that was going to be nil-nil at some point. And then obviously Brownhill got sent off. So that, that obviously changed the game strip game script quite a bit. Foden with 11, Saka with 10, Gordon with two. Huang, who I brought in for KDB, got three. And then Haaland got me 10 points as my captain and Watkins got me nine. So yeah, I, I did the KDB to Huang move about quarter of an hour before the deadline because yep. I was driving to uh, Bournemouth. And, uh, and I was like, I've just got to do this move now. So I did it because I thought he would be benched anyway. Uh, yeah. He had a good chance, right. didn't he, in the, in the last minute? He, Who? KDB. KDB. He looked KDB. slow, mind. Very he slow. Looked, I thought he, he was going to really bury it. it. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, right, so this is this is him now. Like, he's going to be... And then obviously midweek, he got four assists. And <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, maybe he's back. <laughs> so, I, yeah, it's, um, I, was, I was quite happy watching the game. Foden, by the way. If you haven't watched him in real life yet, he is unbelievable. Yeah. I cannot believe how good he is. He, he, you know, and he's nailed in that team now, isn't he? So, I've never seen uh, a player be able to take the ball at the at the at their own penalty area and just drive yeah. it forward. Like the ball is like I mean, you know, like, it's not like Messi levels of like ball yeah. sticking to his feet. It's that yeah. good. It, he can have three players around him and get out of it. It's, yeah. it's, I've, I haven't seen anybody like him for a long time. But um, yeah, fifty six points. I had. I think it was a 1K green arrow. So <laughs> I thought this blank game week was going to be my week, really, with, especially with 11 playing when a lot of people didn't. But uh, yeah, it's how it is. It's um, 56 points so up to 74K. We'll take it. Yeah. Wait, what, what a couple of things. Oh, no, go on, no, 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 go on, Mark. Now, a couple of things there. Uh, Andy, you have seen Chris Cohen play, though, haven't you? So you I know, have, you indeed. Want to advise that, for, the, for the mighty oval, obviously. Oh, okay. Not for the the uh, uh, not for the higher. No, I didn't see him playing at left back for you. No. Oh, okay. Uh, secondly, Di, I know you've done a super chat. I've copied it into a text file to save later, and we're going to cover it then. But it's one of those super chats where I go where he gives us many many options, and we've got to go through the entire team. So we're not going to derail it for that, but we'll come back to it later. So yep. yeah, just to sell that. Yep. yep. Um, uh, I've seen we had a super chat from Dow. Uh, we will. Yeah, I that's w- it. That's what I mean. That's what I've just referred to. Oh yeah. 
Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just, He's completely... not listening, Andy. He's not listening to a word I say. <laughs> I was panicking because the chat just completely disappeared. <sighs> you say we take it at the end? Yeah, I've got it. I've cut and pasted it into oh, a fine. text file. Yeah, fine. It's all good. So oh, we'll, we'll get to it, though, at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, did you not listen to any of that? <laughs> he doesn't. I, I, I don't think he listens to either of us, Andy. I panicked. I <laughs> I, I've got a reason why. Because because my whole um, social stream dashboard just completely shut down. And I thought right. the stream had this, stopped. This is what keeps happening to me tonight. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm the only one. There's issues up. happening, but we're still here. Everything's fine now. Everything's... Uh, Mark's everything's sat there reset. killing everything every now and again and just loving life. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the jukebox says three of my top four FPL. You just, there's something in the right place. Oh, it's chaos. Oh. This, is, this is so good. This okay, is why I like streaming with you There voice. you go. Three of my top four. Uh, who's the fourth? YouTube guys all on one show together. Who, who, who do we reckon? We reckon Slippers? Uh, Oscar. Oscar. I mean, he, if Andy's Ooh. one of the top four, he's obviously quite left field. Here we go. So it could, oh, it yeah. could be bloody anyone. It could be Johnny. <laughs> it could be, could be Johnny. The four most handsome men in the FPL community. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a compliment, I guess. Yeah. Uh, great in the goods. Uh, I need to get rid of that one now. Hang on. There it goes. Uh, Andy, look, look at this. this. Oh. Look at this. Two green arrows in the whole league, and it's you two. <laughs> oh. Take that. Take that. That's why look they come to Lake Tech on a well. Friday. We're the only ones with yeah. green arrows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is outrageous. And only two. Uh, I mean, how many people are actually in this league? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen people, I think, in this league. Only two went for Saka. You were one of them, Mark. And uh, mm. FPL Guns, who's playing very rogue um, at the moment. Everyone else went for Haaland. Are we being a bit blinded by Haaland lately? Good question. Is Haaland oh, without De Bruyne, for example? Is that is that the main difference maker? Like he's back in the team. I think we're all going Haaland this week. KDB's back. When KDB's not in the team, I remember because there was one goal for Haaland where KDB got the ball and Haaland just ran and he didn't even look like to his right yeah. and the ball just appeared in Haaland's feet and he just buried it. That's the difference, I, I, isn't it? I think it's making a little bit of a difference. Like he's had to play with Doku quite a bit because Grealish has been injured and Doku doesn't help him at all. And I think they even played Mateus Nunes on the left wing against Bournemouth and that didn't help him at all either. Foden's obviously brilliant, but I, I just, I do think there's maybe a little bit of that. But then you look at midweek and if KDB does play, it, you know, it, he just gets that service like he does. And against Man United, I think he's going to get that service. And obviously mm. defensively, we're not exactly sound either. So I do think, I, I don't know, it, it's always a funny one with Harlem because I've looked at it a couple of times with a couple of wildcard drafts that I've been looking at, which I know we're going to look at tonight as well. And there is a possibility of going without him. Up until mm. game week. 30. Oh, I forgot like, to mention you that you're wildcarding this week. I'm not wildcarding. No, this week. no you've, I heard. No, you said next you would. Week. I heard. <laughs> He's I done heard. now. He's committed. Yeah, I heard you were. That's why we got you on the stream. <laughs> oh, why oh, did thank you? you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, but I have been looking at it and I've been toying with it because it's always good to do that to see how far away you are from where you think the perfect kind of team is. Mm. And there is there is a possibility of going without Harland in the next. You know, I mean. I wouldn't say this week, so I do think it's a good fixture this week still. But after this week, I think there's a possibility of going without him. And I do think people are maybe being a little bit blinded by it because mm. Mark went Saka last week. It was a good fixture. Look at this week. Saka's got Sheffield United. Mm. I, it could Tempting, be one of those weeks again. This week yeah. is a very, very good week for mm. other captains. Yes. And yeah. Haaland is obviously a good good captain, but you've got Son, you've got mm. Watkins. Um, you know, there's, there's decent, decent picks out there. Saka, obviously. Um, I mean, Mark, we talk, I mean, we do our kind of like post-mortem at the end of every season and we mm. always look, don't we, at, at, at captains. And even last year when Haaland was so good, we looked and saw the kind of like ways in which you could have gone against it and, and benefited. Mm. I mean, the thing with Haaland is you almost sort of guarantee something every week because even when he has a poor game, he still manages to get like an assist um, uh, and in, in games like that. But... Uh, this week, are we in danger of overlooking some of the other options again? I think we are, yeah, because you're right. I looked at captaincy the other day and it's, there's, there's a wealth of choice there. And I do like Saka at Sheffield United. Mm. I, I, I think I've predicted a 4 0 win for Arsenal because um, we've seen Sheffield United capitulate at home before to lesser sides than Arsenal. Mm. They've lost what? They lost, was it seven or eight to Newcastle? And then they, they mm. lost to Villa. They conceded five to Villa. Um, Arsenal go there and in imperious attacking form. Saka himself, excellent. And it really, I think, much depends on what we think United will turn up like um, in terms of whether Haaland's the better option. So I think it is, uh, it is tight. And, and yeah, I, the opportunity to go against Haaland when there's a good 
and when there's a good option, when you're going for an elite player uh, as an alternative, and often that's been Salah. Last season it was Rashford at times. This season, at the moment, I think it is Sacco. I think he is playing at a level where he's an elite FBL asset at the moment again. Right? Um, so, and Arsenal are very, very strong in attacking terms. So, it makes sense to think about it for sure. Yep, very interesting. Uh, anything else we need to report here? Not really. I'm catching up on Tom Freeman. Yeah, she had a he had a poor week. I think the worst week in the great and the good this week. But I'm still 36 points behind him. But he's my next uh, my next target. Uh, Andy, you've overtaken General, I believe, who yeah. also had a poor week, 45 minus 8. Yeah, easy, isn't it? No, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd, I'd be more than happy with uh, with mid-table from this. But it's, it's mm. you know, it, there's so many swings that are going to happen with all these double game weeks and blank game weeks and how people are going to play them. And yeah, I was more than happy to just take no hits this week. You look at how many hits there were last week, mm. you know, and especially after a double game week going into a blank game week, minus 4s and minus 8s all over the place. So... Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how people then do. Because if they took minus fours and minus eights for a player like Huang, and now he's injured and obviously doesn't play in the blank either, mm. it feels like those were maybe hits that didn't really help people at all. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how people do moving forward. Well, my transfers were Huang and Solanke in. And both <laughs> for a hit. And both are bloody injured. Talk <laughs> about, both got injured, Talk yeah. about cursed transfers. <laughs> uh, I think we should start, before we get into the data, let's take a, a look in with, uh, with Ben Krellin. Um, obviously, if you're not following him, uh, what are you doing? You're obviously not playing. Uh, <laughs> well, when you said that, it's almost like we got a webcam in Ben Krellin's house. Let's, let's, let's yeah. drop in on Ben Krellin. <laughs> we, we, like we, yeah. we should <laughs> set up. You, you know, like in, in Big Brother back in the day when they had like a 24-hour camera? Just that in <laughs> better than awesome. actually. Well, it, I'll it, tell you what, Ben bought. should do that. <laughs> He should do it. He'd make a fortune, wouldn't he? Yeah. Maybe getting a bit weird now. I think is, is that maybe <laughs> really he's just <laughs> just sat there on the laptop with a ball. Yeah, on, the, on like Excel. Someone yeah. there with a gun to his head. Yeah. I reckon. The, I reckon people are like, oh, the, the stream's frozen. Ben just sat at the computer. But actually, that's just what yeah. he does for the Premier League. Come round and go. What, what do we do with the fixtures, Ben? <laughs> we get it on camera. Finally, we know Ben's in charge of the fixtures. He, the and, and he should be. Um, but he's obviously <laughs> updated his uh, his spreadsheet with his kind of likely likely fixtures and and we we've talked about this kind of in, in previous weeks obviously we know the 29 fixtures now it's one of the main reasons why we're doing this on a friday night because we didn't want to stream before we we kind of knew the ins and out of those and it went exactly how we all predicted yeah. it there was no no shocks uh, at all so luckily our content from last week mark is still um fairly valid if people want to go back and look at the options and that but we're kind of looking even further ahead now to game week 34 and seeing what the potential doubles um are and I mean, if you look at this list, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty rubbish, isn't it? I mean, the the predicted <laughs> doubles kind of falling into this could be uh, what's that? Bournemouth, Villa. Um, that's that's fifty nine percent. Palace, yeah, that's Newcastle. One of the lower ones. Yeah, Everton, Liverpool, and Sheffield United, Burnley. Yeah. <laughs> They're the most likely game week 34 double fixtures. I mean, what do you do with that? If you're saving your free hit for 34 and you just get those fixtures in, are you really going to be messing up your team, taking out your Salas and Sons and Sackers to bring in, like, them? What, with the free yeah. hit? Yeah. Um, I mean, you are, yeah. I'm guessing, because you're going to target the doubles, aren't you? But It depends. I mean, you don't have to go mad with it, do you? I guess the... the yeah. There is a drive if you're going to play the free hit to maximise it as much as possible and go with a lot of double game week mm. players. You don't have to. It's almost like people are saying, well, if you save it for 34, you're going to end up taking players out to score lots of points. Well, not necessarily. Unless you don't have to do that. You can make three or four changes. You don't have to make. Mm. And, then, and also, you can bring in other single game week players that are very good, right? So if if these single game week players have got such great fixtures and in good teams, why can't you get some more of those, right? So it's not. It's not a given that you're going to blow the free hit, but I get the point that, you know, in game week 29, there's a more obvious upside, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, even looking at the looking at some of the lesser fixtures, I mean, there's not a huge number of, of, of like even potentially good games. I mean, you know, you look at someone like Brighton, Chelsea and Man City um, at home. I mean, Man City, Spurs and Brighton, that'd be pretty good, but we're all going to have Harlan and Foden anyway. Who else do you add to kind of that? that mix um, I mean Manchester United would have Newcastle and Sheffield United at home so I guess you take a, a punt on someone like Rashford maybe or Fernandez. but 
I don't know. I mean, Liverpool with Fulham and Everton, that would be that would be potentially the most interesting one. Yeah, but it's got that's got lowest chance. But it's got one five. Yeah. yeah, fifty like a fifty percent chance. But I'm saying mm. if, if you know if we you'd have to get if we say we had five or six fixtures in there and it was some of these kind of lesser ones, that would be all right. But I don't know. What are you, what are you thinking, Andy? Because um, uh, uh, where are we all kind of in 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 general with with the chips? Because I'm I'm hundred percent free hitting in twenty nine. Like that is locked yeah. in. I've got four players like for that week as things stand. Yeah. Are you the same? So, so I had four, and now Richarlison's injured. So <laughs> I've got three, and one of them, oh, and God. one of them's Taylor. One of them's Charlie Taylor. So oh no! I am I'm either free hit twenty nine or on wild card next week. That's that's the two ways I'm looking. Or wild card in this moment. week? No, not this week. No. <laughs> <laughs> next week. But that, those are my two options. I think at the moment. I'm looking at game week 34 and thinking it be a, it could be a good bench boost week. Personally, I that's think what that I said be a really before the show. Mm. There you go. Because I'm I'm looking at it and thinking those players that we don't really want can sit on your bench. You've got those good mm. players already in your team. Like people. Are... Oh, that was oh, it. That, that was, was gonna be, that was that was, that was gonna that was it. That was gonna be the nugget that, that <sighs> would have given us like another hundred subscribers, and he's gone and lost <sighs> his internet. That's again. that's top 100k gone for me now. If <sighs> with that nugget, I could have. Smash it! I have no idea what he was going to say, but it was going to be a nugget. <laughs> it was going to be good. Um, yeah, I mean, what you so you you were talking to me before because your your chip strategy is yeah. changing now for the third time. I might add. No, it's not changing. No, no, no. no well, no. I, I think the beauty of the fact that Son is now the option for this week, there you go. which he is, right? He Chan for Son is the transfer. The beauty of that um, is that it leaves me with the opportunity to not make my mind up this week because mm. by going He Chan to Son. I can. That is still a move towards game week 29 because obviously Spurs play and Son will probably be the most popular captain pick. So actually, the transfer I make this week moves me to five players for game week 29. Whoa. Um, so obviously <laughs> then ahead of game week 28, I could take some hits and favour Luton players that would get me another couple of game week 29 players plus get me double players. So say, for example, I get Son in this week, gives me five Next week, I take a couple of hits and I get Kaminsky and Barkley in. That gives me seven. And then into 29, I take another couple of hits and suddenly I've got nine. Okay, I've taken hits, mm. but some of those hits were for double game week players, right? So, you know, you, you kind of think, well, it's a four-point hit, but you're getting Barkley and Kaminsky who play twice, who are likely to start twice, so you're getting two points back probably in both of them. So they're not quite as bad. So when some of the hits you're taking towards 29 are double game week players, which what Luton can give you, it does lessen it a bit. It makes me think that actually making the sum move this week and then making my mind up later is probably what I'm going to do. If I had nine for 29, I wouldn't free hit. I don't, I don't yeah. think you even need nine. No. No. I think I it's... I genuinely don't. I, 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 I wrote about it on, in the in Scout article um, early in the week. I think it's Bowen, Watkins, Tony... Son mm -hmm. and then another Spurs player. They're your core yeah. five. Like if you've got yeah. those core five, then I think you genuinely think you're fine. And, then you sprinkle in a want, couple others. I would 100% focus on those attackers as well. Yeah. Because defence has just been absolutely dreadful this year, pretty yeah. much all year. I wouldn't worry too much. Like for me, for instance, I got Taylor. I wouldn't be that worried if I had Taylor and but well, I had the the other attackers. But I just, yeah, it's 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 a tough one in terms of how people are going to play it because I think we get to the point now where it's so de team dependent and there's so many people out there saying you shouldn't be using this, you should be doing that. Mm. And it's so dependent on what your team is. If there are people out there that's only going to have three people in game week 29 at the moment and they have no Bournemouth at the moment, I think they've got to really. Mm. I, ca I can't see how people can navigate through 29 and it be okay. I think the uh, Andy what oh sorry I keep interrupting you, you do, oh, don't don't worry about it Mark you know I'm used to it um, over the years but I just want to ask <laughs> I just want to ask Andy a question because like it's normally me and Andy on a Friday I feel like he's like a gooseberry here uh, <laughs> yeah I feel a little bit like yeah, that. I'm yeah, bloody hosting right? don't make me <laughs> if you if you really wanted one. to make me feel like a gooseberry you could have hosted but no old muggins <laughs> over here um, I want to ask Andy a question what do you think about favouring Luton in 28 for the double in order to get a couple more in for 29 what do you think about that tactic in terms of what getting getting well, it, with, uh, sorry if, getting if ahead of 28, 28 it's hard to listen yeah, to yeah. isn't it andy so <laughs> it is a little bit, yeah. so for game week 28 luton and bournemouth play twice right yeah so rather than going all in on bournemouth i mean we're all going to have solanke but rather than going zanessi and neto or zanessi and tavernier yeah. maybe going kaminsky and barkley yeah. so that you get two double game week players for 28 
but you're also getting two for 29. But what do you think about that? Is it imperative we go in on Bournemouth? I know yeah. they've got the better fixtures, but Luton, Palace away, Bournemouth away. Yeah, what do you think? See, see, that's the thing. I, the thing I really like about Bournemouth is that in 30 and 31, they have really nice fixtures as well. So you've got those players, and if you have to keep them after 29, you're actually quite happy with keeping them. So they, I think it's... It was, they got Everton at home and someone else at home. Yeah, so they've but got, what they've got, yeah. God, I'm interrupting you now. <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm saying this. is... This is, this is were, Mark's show. We're all <laughs> if, you were, <laughs> if you were to do this, you'd be well carded in 30. So don't worry about taking okay. it beyond 29. Right. right. So carry but, on. Sorry, you can... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so I kind of get that. I, I just think we, we've done this before where you, I, I do think you've got to just target those Bournemouth players in 28. Right. The problem is, I don't see who you're going to get as your third Bournemouth player. I've been saying this for quite a while because people are obviously talking about Senesi and now they're talking about Zabani because senesi has got the eight yellow cards. But I think people still go Senesi if he doesn't get booked this mm. week. Yeah. And then it's who do you get as your third one? Because I still wouldn't touch any of those midfielders. I think I said that to you last week. I think Tavernier is, is woefully out of form and, and probably won't get both games. Uh, you, all the other players you're thinking I'm not really going to touch them either and then it's Neto I suppose so you, you go, go double yeah. defence double defence exactly, yeah. I, I think that's you go, good so you go Neto and that but I don't, I, I don't think I'm going to be I don't know using all those transfers on it I think I'd rather get a Luton player I think I'd rather get like a Barkley so right. I think if I got to two Bournemouth I think I'd then start looking at Luton players but I think if I was only yeah. on one Bournemouth I think I'd still get a Bournemouth player over a Luton player it's, personally it's interesting because when, when, when I put the free hit together because um, I actually quite like the fixtures in, in 29. I know there's not many of them, but I like yeah. Villa versus West Ham. I think they can score, you know, having two Villa midfielders in that, I'm, I'm happy with, or even, you know, two midfielders and Watkins um, as well. You've got Tony against Burnley. I expect him to do well um, in that game. Obviously, you've got your double Spurs, um, maybe even triple if you go for Werner as well, and, and, you, and you target that. And then if I was going to pick a, a winner that in come that... Where that come from? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if Richarlison's out, you could go Madison, Werner and... <sighs> And Son. That and winded me, that did, Andy. Took me <laughs> this, is, this is like people mentioning Bowen last week. I'm What's just, going on? I'm just throwing it out there. We've got options. Or you go boring and you go for like a Destiny or a Poro if he's back. But you go, I would Destiny. I would, I would, be going for, for Forrest against Luton. Like I'd be picking Gibbs White, maybe a Langer, um, and then maybe like a Murillo or whoever Mark tells me to get in defence. And, you know, and you, and you really push that free hit chip towards targeting. You know, you pick four teams and you go in on those four teams. That's how I'd do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, That's how you play it. But I then so. I guess with yeah. Mark's right, the problem is you're, if you're going in with free Luton, that isn't the way round that I'd ideally want to do it. And I mean, they could do all no. right against against Forest, I guess, but three Luton in that match? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We're very weak on set plays, right? So Doty's a good pick against us. And if we're weak on set plays, Barkley could take a few as well. And maybe take a loot and another loot centre back in. Yeah, or maybe they haven't Morris, got any yeah. centre backs. They're all injured. All four <laughs> of them. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, where's the clean sheets coming from in twenty nine? Because what you said about the number of players you want, mm. like you, we've got to pick a goalkeeper and three defenders, right? So to pick a goalkeeper and three defenders with a free hit, you've got to look for some returns, right? So you, you're basically you're looking for attacking returns, aren't you? So if you've already got Doughty and Polo, you've probably got the two best attacking defenders in that game week right mm. yeah. you're not getting I can't see a clean sheet Burnley Brentford is that a clean sheet maybe Brentford I maybe. wouldn't back them to keep a clean but sheet I wouldn't back it no, no. Brentford's defence bad Luton Forest we won't keep a clean sheet Villa and I don't think Luton will either Fulham Spurs probably Spurs but if you've got Poro you've got it covered West Ham Villa I think that would be goals so I don't think there's many defensive returns there so if you rule out having a goalkeeper and one defender you've, that's nine you could lose another defender and mm. go to eight, couldn't you? So seven or eight is probably the sweet spot, isn't it? I think. I think for me, it's just for me, Dan and Andy. Uh, it's just <laughs> kind of. Me. Me, me, me. Uh, it's just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's knowing that if I free hit in twenty nine, I'm going to be thirty twenty to thirty points better off, guaranteed, than if I don't use it. Whereas, guaranteed. are you? Well, yeah, I think. Well, if, if 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 I go into twenty nine with four players, or, down, Mark. or take down. or take a minus eight to get to seven, for example, I that is like I'm I'm going to get few points with with the minus eight as well. Whereas when you free hit, you're you're going to get some returns from some of the other players. Twenty thirty points easy 
I'd well, say. I've just said you're not going to get many from the four, the keeper and the three defenders. So that's four of them out. Yeah, but you don't think going, getting like doubling up on on Spurs. I, I, yeah, I, I can't but get. You can I, do that with the hits with a minus eight. Yeah, okay. So the minus eight is what you're losing. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. But you are saving your free hit for later, which obviously. Just because you don't use it in 29, you can use it after that. So you've got to mm. think, what am I going to get after from it? Yeah. And I agree that 34 doesn't look that attractive for it. But um, it doesn't mean that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a slam dunk for me yet. Anyway, that's the, that's the answer you're looking for. You want us all to commit to whether we're yes, free hitting immediately 29. and lock well, it I, in. I'm not, I oh. refuse to do that. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to make up my mind after, after this week. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're on the maths, by the way. Oh, if yeah. you make up 20 to 30 points, you'll still only be 220 points behind Mark. So you've still got a big <laughs> Sorry, can you, to... can you cut out again and bugger <laughs> off? <laughs> I, do, I do agree with what Mark just said, though, in terms of if, if you're not using it in 29, where are you using it? Because mm. 34 doesn't seem the time to use it. But then 37 could still be good. End of season, yeah. you yeah. know, there could be a lot of changes to teams. Hopefully, Arsenal, Liverpool and, and City are still doing a bit of a title chase, so then you can pick their good players. Uh, so it's, I think it's, I think 37 would be the time to use the free hit. I just think in 37, think we're going to have, more like bench boost. we're going to have a lot of these players yeah. anyway, because it is Arsenal, it's Spurs, it's Man City, it's Brighton. Mm. Like, we're going to be, we're going to be loaded up on, on those. We'll be out of Europe by then and maybe have a, we won't have a full squad because everyone's, everyone's injured. But, I don't know, 37... Free here. I mean, that's a lot of the time when people have got the, the bench boots earmarked for anyway, isn't it? So kind of getting that mm, that combination I'm, I'm right. I'm with Andy. I like the bench boost 34. I think that's, mm. like I said to you before we came on, I think that's good. Yeah. So I, Also, people, it's are, been... people are building for 34. Are they definitely going to have all those players in E by 37? Mm. So that big double in 34, and you're trying to get all those players in from, well, I don't know, where, where are they going to be? Uh, Bournemouth and, you know, Everton and that. Yeah, but you uh, wild card you, in. You can wild card in. Oh, of course, yeah. You still yeah. have wild card. Well, unless I use mm. it this week, what? Yeah, <laughs> which you are, as we can, as we can, yeah. as we can guarantee. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is it is, it is interesting. I think people who have got more players than Andy and myself are probably yeah. more on the fence with it. I think if you've got three and I've got four, I think we're kind of. <laughs> if we, it's yeah. going to be quite difficult for us to get the ones we want. You're probably in a better position than us, Mark. Which. Is pretty much your season in a nutshell, isn't it? Got lucky. Exactly. Slippers, slippers Luck is again. in, right? And saying that as he's actually talking sense, this is so weird. Like, Whoa! Yeah. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Gonna. Oh, as he's acting surprised, like he didn't put it gonna up on the screen. Frame that. <laughs> <laughs> I did put it up on the screen uh, as well. Uh, right, let's take a look at some team data, and we just leave. Let's talk uh, on the screen. No, as we I'm go. taking it off. Taking it off. <laughs> yeah, I was good. shocked by this. The two teams I wanted to highlight in the season team data defense. Fourth and fifth for expected goal conceded non penalty per ninety, Everton and Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. You said it was wrong. You got you had me checking. I the did. Data, didn't I you? did. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. Brighton in fifth, unbelievable. It's a bit like good back last year, wasn't it? When Palace were, were were high, but just couldn't keep a clean sheet kind of mm. all all season. They're in sixth, um, actually. Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool. You'd expect then Everton, Brighton, Palace. But it is very volatile. If you remember, Forest were third last week and then have gone down as a result of of the uh, of the. I've forgotten who we played now, uh, but yeah, we've gone down the down the levels there. So, I think that um, we're going to see the, the outside of the top two or three. We're going to see the, the group underneath that changing quite a lot because there's not a massive gap. Look, Bournemouth one point four eight up to Brighton one point two nine. It's not huge. You get mm. one bad game like Forest did um, against Villa. Now I remember. Uh, and we drop right down, so it is quite volatile there. It looked, but I mean, it's it's Arsenal. Wait until you get to the next six on Arsenal as well. Not point six five xg non penalties. Incredible. Is that about the best we've ever seen? Like for season data, I can't well, remember. No, because the, the next screen is the best you've ever for, for see. season though. For season data, zero point six five over the season. I think that's higher than City have been in, in previous years. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that is. So it's it's an incredible um, defensive numbers they're putting up. Arsenal and even more so over over the last six I was about to see but yeah it, it's that that middle of the table is quite a close-knit pack isn't it there's not a lot in it two clean yeah. sheets all season for Brighton says FPL well, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah that is that is crazy uh the other the other crazy thing down here is got to be Newcastle on 18th right over the season yeah. um you know they, they started off the season with with good data and that slide is probably one of the biggest I've seen um mm. over the years of doing these as well so i mean i've got trippier have you got you got trippier as well mark 
Yeah, but home to Wolves, and Wolves won't have Kuna or Chan. This you keep week, promising me this week. inverted midfielder trip it's, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold him, just right to the end. Um, interested here, Sheffield United, Luton, the bottom, mm. and obviously they're Bournemouth's opponents next week. Um, yeah. So, mm, if only there was a fault. midfielder like Andy. I said, know. Maybe we could take a risk because I, I like if Sinisterra, only... but yeah, like, you just can't risk it, can you? What we need is someone who regularly goes to Bournemouth and watches them, but I just can't think of anyone. <laughs> <we know. laughs> exactly. Definitely not trusting Andy's mate again. No, I know. <laughs> never mind. I, I won't talk to him now. <laughs> Uh, anything else to put it? No, let's go over to the, the the six. Yeah, so I mean, 0.31 for Arsenal. That's that's what you said. I think that is the highest we've seen in any of these on yeah, any of these I have charts. To check that. I mean, that's it, crazy. It, if if you're looking for a defensive move this week, surely an Arsenal defender. There is no chance Sheffield United score this week. Surely, I know anything so, can it, happen and all that, but come on. So if you if you are guaranteed free hitting in 29. Mm. Would you be getting Gabrielle in this week for a mm. hit? Well, that's what I'm debating. I'm I'm yeah, debating a, a Stupinan to Saliba for a hit, mm. just because I think that gets paid. That gets paid off like straight away. Because I've looked at it. Yeah, I've looked mm. at it because I, there's no way I'm going to move. Up. Like because I don't have Gabrielle, and I am. I can't believe I'm saying it about centre back, but I'm terrified of not owning him every week. Mm. It's like as with Watkins, you, you know, all those months ago. <laughs> fear, the I'm, like, fear. Still think he's going to poke on, his head around the was, door. Yeah, I was listening. <laughs> I was listening to the game on the way back on the radio, and of course, originally they thought Gabriel scored, and I just thought, yeah. I've done, it's happened again. Like yeah. how? Because set pieces, they're ridiculous at the moment, aren't they? And yeah. I just think every week I'm like, actually, he's my biggest killer most weeks. Like when he scores at the moment, so I'm just thinking, actually, with their you know non penalty xgc, I just think actually yeah. they're playing these set pieces to him as well. That's the key yeah. thing. Like they are deliberately targeting him, and as well they should because he's an absolute unit. And it's Brentford yeah. game week 28 at home as well. And Brentford yeah. are not clever at set plays, defending them. So um, And they've got no me and Pinnock. Yeah. yeah. And also, you wait to see my defence. <laughs> You're not going to do a me joke, are you? I've, I've, I've done enough over, over the... Right. Over, I mean, I not, not as many do. as Harry, but... Yeah. I thought he was going to do a Pinnock joke. <laughs> that would be yeah, that would be a bit left field. <laughs> yeah, but I know, you know, without, without me in defence, obviously they're a lot weaker. And then if Ben Mee's not there as well, then... Very good. Huge Very good. Well done. Thank well you. Done. <laughs> Bournemouth are pretty good there, by the way. Bournemouth are very good. City in that as very well. good here, fourth. Um, For their next two fixtures, yeah. it, it makes you feel a bit better bringing in like a Zabani or a Neto. Absolutely. Because that, that would be the other yeah. option is, is move a stupid hand out for Senesi and just hope mm. he doesn't get booked this week. Which oh. I've, I've been talking to some Bournemouth fans and they are all but convinced he's going to get booked this week. He got Not booked really. in the cup. He gets booked by it yeah. all the time as well. Yeah. And they say, it, it was a bit, you know, when Jackson had the four yellow cards and uh, yeah. Pochettino was like, look, you cannot get booked in this game. And, and if you do, just make sure it's not with arguing with the ref. Like we hate it when you get booked for arguing with the ref. Book arguing with the ref. Next game. <laughs> 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 you know that's going to happen with Senesi. You know he's going to get booked, but... Well, my my mate has guaranteed bookings in that game, so we know oh, what's going to happen. Oh, well, I'm definitely, <laughs> definitely bringing him in then. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, fourth in this list, 1.22 expected goal conceded on penalty per 90. Um, I mean, obviously Arsenal with 0.31 is is like three times better than City uh, in second at 0.92, uh, which is crazy. And then right down the other, other end over the last six, Brentford um, are the bottom. Mm. And I've got to ask you about this, Andy. You must be bricking it having sold Palmer this week. Oh, I didn't sell Palmer this week. I sold him a couple of weeks ago. But it's <laughs> funnier if I say you sold him this ahead of this week. <laughs> yeah, so obviously I made that decision. So I kept Gordon instead of Palmer. Uh, Gordon obviously hasn't done anything, but he's got Wolves at home this week. So And he's at home. So Gordon does very well at home. So I'm just hoping Palmer doesn't do an awful lot this week. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. He's going to be the one that's going to hurt me, if yeah. anything. Because I, ne- I nearly Brent sold him. so bad. Yeah, I nearly sold yeah. him for, for Huang. But with the De Bruyne news, was, was happy to kind of do that do that instead. Yeah. Um, I mean, Palmer's another captain potential, isn't he, Mark, yeah. this week? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's... Um... I, I'm going to, if I do get Son in for Wang, I'm going to end up having to bench Bailey because there's no way, at Bailey at Luton, because I just don't see, I've got, I've got to play Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I know it, it's, it's it's tough, right? But I've got, I mean, I am I guess I'm hoping Solanke doesn't start and then Bailey comes mm. off the bench for me, right? So, but I think that's what I go with. You know, I'll have Foden, Son, Saka and Palmer. Who am I dropping mm. out of that to play Bailey? And I can't drop Watkins, Solanke or Harlan, can I? So... I'm having to bench Bailey, who, who isn't as effective away from home, but against Luton, 
yeah, it's not don't, it's not comfortable, is it? Mm. So, mm. Yeah. so you were hoping Solanke was injured, I'm assuming. So it made a decision for you. Well, he is still a doubt, isn't he? And he's gone up to a different shade of orange. So we've <laughs> but we've seen a few. Harry's Essex. got some news, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. We've seen Very a few good. things come out, haven't we? Saying that he's uh, yeah, apparently he's trained and he might be okay. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ha- Harry got a leak, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Well, it is. Uh, it is uh, St David's Day. So. <laughs> <laughs> also oh very God. good. We're on fire today. Yeah. <laughs> All talk about comedians <laughs> at the start of the stream. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Sheffield United in twelfth, despite the hammerings they've had um, as as well. Mm. I mean, you know, it's it is almost like an away versus home thing with them, isn't it? But kind of the reverse in which you'd expect at home. Maybe they go for it a bit more. They're a bit more open. Uh, whereas away they they sit back. I mean they're going to set up shop against Arsenal, aren't they? There's there's no way they're, they're going to play a similar tactic that they did against um, against Wolves and and just mm. try and contain because they will get absolutely <laughs> murdered if they try. I just can't. I just can't see it though. I just, I just can't, can't see, see any way Arsenal don't I score. Mean, get three to or four. the attacking yeah. data. Get to the attacking data and have a look at Arsenal. Yeah, yeah I mean let's look, let's look so, over yeah. over the last six then for a start. So Arsenal are top of that. Yeah. Um, by well. a margin, two point five, a big margin, two point five yeah. over the last six, four big chances per game. Yeah, right. So if you give Arsenal four big chances per game, and they're playing Sheffield United, so you've got to add probably add one point five to that. They're going to get what five and a half big chances mm. in that game, possibly against the worst defence. Yep. How many goals are they going to get from five point five big chances? I mean, obviously there's no science in any of that, but you've got to think they are going to get four big chances against yeah. Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah, around that. Absolutely, yeah, they're His amazing. The table says them. So, um, yeah. Sorry, just talking before... yourself into a sack of captain, aren't you? Oh, I am, yeah. Well, it also, yeah. it's, 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 you know, considering we're, we're thinking of, let's say you're free hitting in 29 and then and then wild carding in, in 30, and you've got Arsenal with, um, you know, two of the two worst defences coming up. Maybe, you know, we are being a bit blinker to Son. Everyone's already getting the pitchforks out for the content creators, aren't they? Uh, you know, saying, um, you know, that's, oh, it's, it's all going to be a... It's all going to be a disaster. But maybe going for like an Odegaard or, you know, using a transfer to double up on the on the set piece uh, defenders who are, who are getting all the chance from set pieces. Maybe it's not an awful idea. I, no? I don't know whether many people are doing the free hit 29 wildcard 30. No. Because I think a lot no. of people are thinking if they're using transfers and free hitting in 29, that actually their transfers look good after 29 as mm. well. Um, so I think yeah. it, and it does kind of naturally look quite good. Like I said, Bournemouth players, it looks good afterwards as well. So I, I think most people will probably wildcard towards 33, 34 okay. uh, and build for those two doubles personally. Can I dismantle the other side of the argument as well as um, on, on not going to... <laughs> slippers, <laughs> not going to... slippers, come and, come and tell me how clever I am. <laughs> on, on, not going, on not going son, he's playing up front on penalties for Spurs. I mean, if he was playing wide left, yeah, if he was on the wing... But not going Son this week. I mean, it could go badly wrong, and it did go badly mm. wrong with He Chan, didn't it? But um, I just think not going Son would be a mistake when he's playing up front. My, yeah. in, in my opinion, I I, I agree. I'm just saying the, the the only flip side to that is they are playing, um, you know, Brentford and Sheffield United. And okay, the the, the stats don't the, the the eye test suggests that Sheffield United are absolutely dreadful because I've seen them get absolutely battered, even though the stats don't mm. necessarily marry it. And then the stats are completely against Brentford. So if you're playing purely yeah. for fixtures, yeah. doubling up on the Arsenal mid. I mean, Havertz called it last week, and he scored. You did, same. and and you know, perhaps we're doing again what I talked about, as in avoiding. Avoiding going different because you're trying to play for 29 this time. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm going. Oh, I'm going to get Son, and then I get a player in for 29, which means I don't have to make my mind up on the free hit yet because I'm moving towards 29. When actually, perhaps going an Odegaard is, is stronger. Yeah, Odegaard. Yeah. Hmm. Have it, Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like getting players in that the week after I look at it and think, why did I go for that player? Light slippers uh, with Bruno Fernandez. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're driving away, as I know, and he's on my team. Him. He's so on my team. Afford, you can't afford <laughs> to do that tonight. Is anyone being nice Treat to me? Treat him mean, keep him keen. Only one being nice to me. Um, I just wanted to mention on the team deck defence, uh, Villa as well, because I, I marked them. We didn't talk about them. Um, mm. Over the last six, they've had good fixtures. So, in fact, in fact, I think the best fixtures, along with Arsenal, over the last six, and yet they're seventeenth in the expected goals mm. conceded on penalty. Obviously, they've got injuries. We're not sure whether Conte's going to yeah. start or Torres. Um, Kamara was a big blowout for them as well but again I mean I look at it this week and I think oh a nice move I'd like to make would be to get Moreno for example because you know it's Luton um, okay then it's Spurs but there could be goals in that and then obviously they've got the game but 
you look at this data and think, I wouldn't be surprised if Luton score in that match. Um, yeah. The other thing with Moreno, which, which, which what we saw the other day, as soon as he gets a booking, he could be off because mm. that's why yeah. he was subbed the other day. So if he gets a booking first half, he might be off before the 60 minute mm. mark. And that's something you Luke, don't get if you go for a centre back necessarily. Luca Dean's been good this year when he's played as well. Mm. So there's every opportunity that, that Dean plays instead of Did Moreno. You, you see that video of Emery and Dean though? Dean's on the bench and like Emery turns and is like having a go at him. And Dean's like, what? Like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Looking really like annoyed. I said, something, there's something not right there. Because Dean was too good to be dropped for every match, like basically since Moreno's been back. I think there's something a bit a bit off there. I think Moreno, Moreno's yeah. pretty safe, but yeah, you never know. Um, and then the other team I wanted to mention on the team direct attack, because obviously Villa in, in third here. So the attack wise, you know, you're, you're Watkins, you're Douglas Louise, it's your Bailey who Mark's going to bench, apparently. No way you're going to bench Bailey. He's been your golden oh, boy. What am I going to do then? Bench boost? Got to. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, accidentally. Uh, West Ham though in nineteenth. Look at that. Yeah. That is why. That is and that is why we weren't really considering Bowen, right? Because we were yeah. waiting to see those numbers improve, to see Paquette back mm. in the team, to see what would happen. And even with the the big win against Brentford, still right down the bottom um, of, of the of the list. So mm. still a bit of a concern. But I guess with Paquette back, you've got to think they're gonna they're gonna climb this table pretty quickly. Improve. Mm. Yeah. Yep. The chance per 90 on Burnley, below 10, that's bad, isn't it? I just realised that. I mean, that's... Look how low that is. I yeah. mean, maybe the Brentford clean sheet in 29 is on. Mm. Certainly that looks to be the way to go, Reggie on and Flecken with a free hit if you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's it's another kind of thing that pushes you towards the Bournemouth defence this week as well because the, the Bournemouth clean sheet does look good this week when you look at these these numbers. Um, mm. But of course, we, it always finds a way to uh, to go against us. Uh, quickly on keepers, if you were buying a keeper now, who do you get? Neto. Neto, yeah, so. yeah it has Neto to be, or doesn't Kaminsky, it? Kaminsky, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I guess if you're on a on a wild card though, like Andy, um, you can't <laughs> necessarily you can't necessarily get Neto. Right? Or at least you've got to have a a backup. So what do you go? Neto and an Areola, I guess. Neto and Areola, yeah. Because yeah. mm. if you're on wildcard now, you would wanted to not use the free hit, so you've got to get Neto and, and a player that plays. So you get maybe Flecken or Areola, something yeah. like that, I guess. Trafford and Kaminsky are the two lowest <laughs> points per 90 goalkeepers <laughs> of the whole season. I thought Kaminsky would be a bit higher, um, given the number of saves. Um, but just shows saves aren't everything, because Kaminsky mm. and Trafford both have the most saves of all goalkeepers in the league and are both the lowest points in terms of points per 90. Mm. Saves per 90 is Dubravka, look, 4.7. Mm. He's got the highest. Um, yep. And I haven't really seen that with bonus points. I think, yeah, what is his bonus, his BPS per 90? 17.6, so it is high. I mean, yeah, I should be getting more points out of him. It's not right. <laughs> yeah. uh, defenders. Yeah, we've got quite a few to talk about here. Oh. Um, looking at the, the season data, got your boy up the top. Andy, yes. Bradley, right yeah. at the top, Playing ten points for ninety. Yeah, I know. You got uh, two starts out of him as well in the in the double, which was uh, I know, a, and four points. <laughs> a bit remarkable. Um, yeah, highest points and highest XG on point for ninety, uh, but obviously only only the uh, four well, four starts. I mean, it's not a, a tiny number now. Um, it's it's obviously not too bad. Um, you got Moreno there, who I pointed out, zero point two four. I do still back him, kind of attacking wise, uh, and then Senese is kind of miles ahead of, of other. Um, other Bournemouth mm. defenders um, that we would kind of consider. Uh, we've got to talk about Stupin now, though. Yes, I was going to ask because that. you know the season data looks good. If you probably look at this chart, you think, "Oh, it's Stupin in, in eighth, not point three oh. That's good." Uh, and in fact, even when you look at it over the um, the last uh, six, I think he still features on it, doesn't he? Twenty nine, twenty ninth. Yeah, but not point one seven. You still think, okay, maybe I can I can keep him. But Lamptey's back now. Veltman's back. Barco came on in the cup and looked really good and started taking some corners as well. I can't see a stupid man starting for them. Mm. What's he done? What's going on? I don't know. Something to do with pasta, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> the horse's well, head in the did. bed thing was, was it, yeah. bang on, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is so weird. Like, is this one of those things where we're looking at it from an FPL point of view and thinking, he's so good as an FPL asset? But they're looking at him thinking he's just a liability in the team and we, we want to play other players. Is that all it is? Defensively, he's always been a bit of a problem. Yeah. Like he, he has. And I think when Matoma's there, he does a lot of the dirty work as well. And we've had players in midfield, like when Belaber was in the team and Gilmore and 
you know, we've got real workhorses in midfield that can kind of cover for him. And I think Deserby's just getting a bit annoyed with that because he's ma- he's making mistakes. He's not always tracking back. He loses his man. He hasn't got the best like positional awareness when you watch him because you know he he, he tries to play offside and messes it up. He did that for the Spurs goal, for example. Those kind of mistakes keep happening. He's so good going forward that it's kind of made up for it. But I think Deserby's like we just need a bit more balance in the mm. side. And Lamptey offers that because Lamptey is a is a decent defender and can still offer a lot going forward um, as well. So. I'm just I just wasn't expecting it to happen now, you know, with with Lamptey with no real right back, you know, Lamptey moving over to to the left and yeah, I mean we played um we played a kid in at right back in, in the FA Cup. Um I can't remember his name. Um Quinn Terro or or something. And you know, you could tell that was a problem position for us. So we need Veltman to come back in on the right. And then I think mm. Lamptey is his favorite over it's Superman at the moment, so I don't think he gets back in. Bradley, yes, I mean, he is outstanding, isn't he? And when you watch him play, four returns in the four starts that he's had uh, in this sample here, and he's top <laughs> 10 for everything, top 10 for the whole lot. Shots per 90, chance credit per 90, BPS per 90, XGI non penalty per 90, and points per 90. Mm. I mean, Trent, we know, is out for a bit longer, and you know, my policy is like just add du- double what managers say. So, I mean, He's very good, isn't he? I wonder whether he's going to be a factor next season, whether we're going to see Trent officially like moved into midfield by whoever manages Liverpool and Bradley figuring. That's it. Definitely a star in the making. Yeah, I do, forgot do, new manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, what are you doing with him, Andy? Are well, you holding him? Well, I was just about to say as well, you think how Alonso's used wing-backs for Leverkusen this mm. year as well. It could be absolutely ridiculous. But no, I'm, I'm holding him at the moment because obviously Trent's out longer. I think in the celebrations when they won the cup he had a proper brace on his leg as well didn't he like Mm. so I think he is going to be out for a little bit longer I'm just taking every week and thinking I'm just going to play him and he could be that explosive player that I want I mean I know you said about he got four he's got four attacking returns obviously three of those were in his first game weren't they Mm. so he does have that explosive potential and actually in the double he he had a shot did he hit the post or something like that so he's got mm. he's got the potential there to still play I, I think I'm just going to play him most weeks and, and hope for the best got in a fight with Chilwell as well had the whole, did the whole yeah. whole works yeah, you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I, to be fair uh, he's probably my second best defender <laughs> which <laughs> says more about my defence than it does about him but no I do, I do actually quite like him I wouldn't be buying him obviously. Mm. But I think if you've got him, I think you just keep him now and, yeah, and yeah. keep him yeah. until until you wildcard. Yeah, no, I agree. And and are you yeah. are you going to hold a super now as well? Oh, I'm <laughs> starting him this week. Oh, it's either him, Taylor yeah. or Mitchell. And I'm looking and thinking, God, like at least if <laughs> Estepinian starts, like he's got some upside. But that's where I'm thinking, like Mark shaking his head in disgust. No and wonder Brandy's thinking, your best defender. <laughs> do I, do I, do I just take the hit and get Gabriel? Because it's like, well, I'm yeah. going to want Gabriel. And uh, Mark, stop it. And uh, I'm just thinking like, yeah, that might be the move because Taylor, I mean, Mitchell's my boy. He was, he's not going anywhere, but Taylor and Esther Pinyan, like, yeah, I probably I'd do get it. rid of them now. I, I, would, I, yeah. would, I would take the hit for him. I, I, just, I just think yeah. it, all of those defenders are getting two or one unless something yeah. surprising happens. And Gabriel's yeah. surely getting six as a minimum. So I'd be I very surprised. Threat. It's ridiculous. Honestly, watching him when you don't own him, and knowing every corner is going to his head, like it's not nice. Yeah, because mm. I yeah, I mean, I've I've got I've got Doty, I, I, who I'd be playing instead of a stupid man at home to yeah. to Villa, um, which maybe isn't awful because you never know what he could put in a cross or or something. But I don't really like either of them <laughs> this week, so I'm in a sim- I, I'm in a similar boat. The only thing I did think when I was looking forward is that Arsenal do have some tough fixtures coming up in terms of clean sheets. Like they obviously play City. And they play, and obviously they got the blank, but I maybe don't have to worry about that. But it's not the best looking forward when you've got two Arsenal defenders and no, nobody else. Mm. But uh, but I do think that hit will probably you know earn itself back quite quickly. I guess it locks you out of another Arsenal attacker. But are we really going to go there? I just I just I don't, don't see a time don't. when we're going to move for Odegaard. Or not before really. the wild card no. in in thirty four no. or thirty or no. whenever you play it around that period. Because no. like, who's the most you're going to have then? Salah, Darwin, and mm. and I, I do think. What else? The Saliba Gabriel thing, uh, you know, they're, they're going to vary who their target is at set plays. It's going to go back to Saliba again and then back to Gabriel. They're, they're going to vary it because defenders are just going to mark Gabriel otherwise. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Saliba crop up for another goal in the next couple of weeks mm. as well. But they're yeah. just so effective at set plays. Those two, yeah. 
you've got to have subs. one. You've got to have one. Yeah. Oh, going have into one, this week. I think there's there's a case for both now for yeah. sure. Uh, one thousand six hundred and three people watching us live at the moment. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, good old good old Friday mm-hmm. night streams. Uh, all wanting to get into FPL mode. That, that all wanting says a always. Lot. Says a lot about the quality of Friday night TV. It does, doesn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I know. We're probably on a few uh, few TV screens as well with Mm. with some wives being like, is is there nothing better on? And they're like, no. (laughs) This is the wives wives are watching too, as yeah, absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. Three of the four most handsome (laughs) content creators. They love they love Jack Whitehall. Yeah. Uh, but yeah thank you all for watching if you haven't already do like the stream uh, we really appreciate it if you're listening on the pod uh, drop us a rating a uh, high one preferably uh, and a comment um, as well uh, and yeah check out Andy on the on the Scoutcast for Scout uh, too yes please um, and yeah all the stats and everything come from Fantasy Football Scout so mm. check out their website um, as well Mark you're still FF Scout Mark I thought you would have yeah, transition. No, I, 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 yeah. I keep I keep loyal to that. You yeah, do, but yeah, um, it's nice. yeah, I will change it at some point. I just can't be bothered. Quite frankly, <laughs> I, I I I lose. I use Twitter less now since since the Walker incident. Which, mm. <laughs> so I'm not on Twitter as much. Uh, but I will probably rejuvenate my Twitter use uh, at the start of next season. And change I mean, your up, Twitter yeah. cover photo is still the blue from oh, two years right. ago of black box which I, i've oh, given no. up even even mentioning now but i'll get billy to do me a new one uh, rank chasers and mode bringing the crowd yeah that's it ear for the mode basically aren't they yeah <laughs> well, Bateman, my wife yeah, quite... my, my wife watches to see andy's winning smile there you go housewife's what favorite say? <laughs> what can i say yeah exactly <laughs> Oh dear! No result predictions, uh, of course. Yeah, they're, they're coming. coming. They're coming. They're, they're coming. coming. Don't worry. We've, Any... got, we've got another two hours yet. I know. <laughs> oh, <God>. young. <laughs> yeah. And your connection's got better. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I know. I thought yeah. that. I'm obviously out of peak time now in Yeovil. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, things, any <laughs> other defenders we want to mention before we move on to mids? Nah, let's go. Let's move on. Let's, no, let's move God, on. No. Okay, let's come over to midfielders. So we've got Bailey climbing up the ranks. He's in fourth now over the season. Freck Shard on Pelipper Night. What a shout he was by you, Mark. I gotta admit, when you bought him in, I thought you'd lost your mind. I didn't <laughs> I didn't like him as an option right. at all. I thought Diaby's mm. there, he's getting benched all the time, but he's been he's been fantastic for you. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it was too much of a, 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 a kind of genius move to say that he was gonna start most games, because I think it was clear he was the first choice. And Diaby has really dropped off, hasn't he? I mean, eight I and eight, though. Yeah. Sixteen goal involvement. You loved Diaby, yeah. didn't you? I did. Yeah. We both did. I, I, yeah. yeah, I yeah. like Diaby, but I think his his output has dropped right off, and he's and Di- Bailey's just gone from strength to strength. At the start of the season, Bailey was coming on, if you remember, and showing up and getting points off the bench. And um, since he's got in the side, though, he's been. Their, I think he's their best player. I mean, and Watkins is their best in terms of output, goals and assists. Watkins has been outstanding, but Bailey's progress this year based on what we saw last season has been outstanding as well. And he was he was the key man against Forrest and I wasn't surprised. So yeah, benching him this week feels horrible, but I just don't know what mm. else to do, to be honest. So yeah, brilliant. Because Douglas Lovely. Louise isn't on this list. Um, mm. He's not far off. I think he's, he's like 0.35 or something like that. Um, but he doesn't make the top 30. Um, not for XGI, not, not for not XGI. Obviously, he's got the penalties, which is a massive factor. Oh. But in, and he is scoring from open play. Um, but if you're a, a stats man, uh, then Bailey is obviously uh, the one. I can't get him, Andy. I physically, I, I cannot bear to bring in Leon Bailey because Mark's had him all season. <laughs> is that a sensible oh. way to play the game? I don't know, but no, I, I can't. I can't really. do it. I, just can't. I think that's a good way of playing when Mark's having a bad season. Mm. But when Mark's mm. having a good season, you don't. Do you know how much it annoys me that he's got for. Foden? Like, honestly, every time I look at his team, I think, you didn't believe in him. You don't deserve, <laughs> you don't deserve Phil. Do you think there should be a rule that, like, if you, unless you talk kindly of a player, you're not allowed 100%. to transfer them in? Yes, right. yes. 100%. That, actually. Yeah. Yeah, mm. don't deserve his points. Which leads no, us to Havertz in 28. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you said about Douglas Louise, by the way, isn't he, like, the second highest midfielder, scoring midfielder this season now? Oof, is he second? Is it that? I think that? He, he's either second or third. I remember seeing a tweet from uh, he is official Premier League. No, yeah, he's, he's not. He's, he's not. sixth. Yeah. Oh, he's sixth. Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. it's over the last six or something. There maybe, but yeah. he's obviously like you can tell he's the pen taker because his spikes are ridiculous. I mean, aren't still they? Douglas Louise being the sixth top scoring midfielder is pretty wild when you think yeah. about the players Incredible. that he is over. 
you know, the likes of Sterling, who's been like 200 point seasons in, in previous years. Um, Odegaard, who got 200 points for us last season as mm. well. Like he's ahead of of all of them. Fair play to him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's it's that role for I, I, Villa, isn't it? Mm. He gets forward. He gets forward a lot. And um, it's very fluid, the midfield three for Villa. And McGinn can shift back and Tielemans can rotate with McGinn. And Lewis just gets, he does raid the box and the way mm. they play. So um, he's not the holding midfielder that he was previously. And um, over the season, he's just been delivering. Yeah. And, and they've, had, they've had their fair share of pens, to be fair. And I think he's had four, hasn't yeah. he? Is it four pens he's got? So. Mm. Mm. Yep. Let's just um let's just work our way down the table to try and find where Bowen is. Oh there he is, he's in twenty yeah, seventh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. I know, 0.46. Uh, man having just got a hat trick. But I mean fourteen goals and, and two assists. Uh you yeah. know, that, that role. I mean he's the second top scoring um midfielder now, isn't he, after Salah? Uh, yeah. who's, who's got fifteen. Um yeah, amazing. He's he's having a, an unbelievable season. And he gets to go out with Danny Dyer to the pub. Like he's living the dream. I'd love to go the out. The dad or the daughter? Yeah, or who both. Do you mean both. There? both. <laughs> <laughs> don't even need to say. Do you say it? Goes. Gets to go with both. <laughs> I he's going to get us cancelled, then, Andy. I, was, yeah, I, did, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to mention Elise as well in in eighth, because I mean, what what a season! I mean, I know it's only eight starts, but what a season he's had when he has played and delivered, and obviously, yeah. and surely that big move is coming. Um, yeah. you know at the he end won't of the be year there next year I don't think. Um, and if, if you know Palace are going to st- stop playing this new swashbuckling star I think the new manager came out and mm. said I want us to play like we were kids and we were just wanting to is score goals is that your Austrian accent there Raz is yes that what it was there? I think it's oh, pretty good okay. I didn't even know he was Austrian to be fair <laughs> <laughs> is it, was it Glasner 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 yeah Glasner, okay. Olivier Glasner Olivier Glasner, yeah. Glasner. Yeah. Glasner. Yeah. but yeah um, he, he's I, I really like Elise I've been to see where, where he moves sorry Andy I cut you off what were you about to say Hit no us. no it's fine I was going to mention he's only in 22nd there but Pascal Gross yeah. for you as well. Yeah. Just his what bonus points this season have just been ridiculous. Like the people that went for him, you know, all those weeks ago have reaped the rewards and fair play to him. Like he has been an absolute pick in midfield recently. So fair play to people that went for him. I think he, he has the the honour of honour, is that the word? Um every time he's got attacking returns, he's got bonus. And even once when he didn't get attacking returns, he got bonus. Um, just his well. baseline is so high. His baseline is so high because he, he yeah. never loses the ball. He passes it loads. His shots are fairly accurate. He's such a good player. I Honestly, I cannot stress how good a player is. Um, we're so lucky to have him in the side. And yeah, I I, I love him. I've got to get a uh, shirt with him on. Osh in the chat saying, where's Gordon? He's actually in 38th place, 0.43. So mm. the data is correct. He's just not in the top 30. That's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people have, have kept the faith and are holding him, even though Newcastle mm. have been a bit in and out of form. Um, and I, I'm seeing a lot of people playing him this week against Wolves and actually thinking of benching, you know, some of the other players that, that we've mentioned. Mm. I've seen a lot of benching headaches this week. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, there's someone in the chat who always thinks that I say that Harvey Barnes is going to take Anthony Gordon's place. I think it's SM. Sure. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say it again just to please him. But yeah, the thing about Gordon, though, as I don't, and you, Andy, mm. is that Harvey Barnes is always there threatening his start. He is. Uh, so I kind of, I kind of agree with that. I don't. I don't really believe that. I think I said once that he's a threat to his minutes. What do you think he is? Like, so Gordon, you know, you know, if he's tired, he could come off with ten minutes to go, fifteen minutes to go. So you're saying Barnes, Barnes is a better is player fit. than Gordon? Is what you're no, saying? No, I didn't say that. But yeah, but but obviously the guy thinks I will. Thinks I mean that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I just thought I'd throw that in just to please him. Mm. Where's Barnes on this list? Maybe we should be buying him. He's higher 16. up. He's 16. Look, they're going to go. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, according to these stats, Gordon's never going to play again. <laughs> exactly. There you there's, go. Yeah. Also, Sarabia's in 13th and there's no Huang or Neto on this mm. list. Yeah. I yeah. really like Sarabia. Like, I've, I've, I've always liked him, but I just worry too much that he's, he's, he's not first choice necessarily or he's mm. going to get ro- rotated and things. But I, I really like him as a player. I, to Spain, I didn't realise how many caps he had for Spain. Mm. Um, yeah. As well, like he's a he's a very good player, but yeah, and nine nine attacking returns is pretty good in in thirteen starts. Um, as yeah. well, having a good season. Uh, Neto and Wang are thirty third and thirty fourth, both on zero point four five yep. xgi non penalty per ninety. Yep. yep. Um, final players to mention here are Son and Madison. Um, you can see I'll just do this as a link to the next slide. But Son slide is it a slide? I keep calling them slides. A screen screen. Scene, well, that's, that's fancy. Mm. I've still got my string deck that I need to set up, by the way. I'm pressing buttons like a mug over it. Oh, I know, terrible. Uh, Son is on 0.57. Membership's money wasted <laughs> no. on devices you'll never use. Oh, I will my, say as my, well... 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Mine must be coming tomorrow. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it yourself. I'll give you enough money. Pocket, <laughs> give me a pocket money. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> Unbelievable. Not what a statement. Oh, I'd, I'd leave again, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going to give you some more money to oh. upgrade your internet soon. Christ. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Oh, <laughs> oh, speaking dear. of speaking of the witch, of the witch, not the witch, not the witch. Speaking of witch, witch. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 Black box um, <laughs> memberships. Um, we are looking at organising a oh, uh, yeah. a black box yeah. slash Godfather tier meetup um, in London. Mm. Um, so you know we haven't really mentioned the perks, but if you do join those tiers, you get lots of perks um, like join the Discord <laughs> channel and other things. Uh, and you might be able to meet Andy. Maybe we'll even invite yeah. Andy along, and I can oh, keep, give, give him a tenner <laughs> to on uh, the retainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know where we're going to do it yet or when we're going to do it but we're definitely going to do it, right? there, we're going to do it. basically there are some very vague plans <laughs> that we might do a meet up and if that isn't enough to get your money <laughs> we'll tell you when so you can join the godfather tier just for that week and then you get yeah, exactly the invite, get yeah. the info yeah. and then immediately yeah. leave yeah. yeah that's it um b max says goes to son for free can't lose other mids. I mean, we've, we're just before we move on because I want to show the Son and Madison over the last mm. over the last six. But would you be moving Gross on? Andy, you seem like a fan. Uh, I am a fan, but I'm not a fan of the fixtures moving forward. Mm. I don't think so. I think I would make that move. It, it, was it for free? Yeah, yeah for, for free. free. Yeah, I, th I think I'd make that for free. Yeah. Definitely. But Mark. I mean, it depends. It all, it, you know, everything we're going to say now is based on what their chip strategy is and all that kind of stuff. But even. If you are free hitting in twenty nine, or you're not free hitting in twenty, I think Son's still a good move anyway. Well, so yes, yeah, exactly. I think I'd do it. Yeah, yeah, yep. He f I, I mean, I, the new the news on Richarlison just changes our yeah, outlook so. on Son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Gro Gross is a good pick, but he's almost a bit sort of luxury in a way because of how we're playing and and things. Like he's a decent option, but if it's Gross is your what is your is your kind of sacrificial lamb, then I think you you do it. Um, this is midfielders over the last six. Mm. I was really surprised to see Madison so low. Um, here because he, he shows up well on the season data, but he's 39th overall. Um, in his four, uh, his four <laughs> till <he> is leaving. <laughs> no, I didn't think about that. We could be putting people off joining the membership. Who put yeah. that up? And you do highlight that, or was I that did, Billy? Yeah. Doing? Oh, I was gonna say, that'd be really good if it was Billy. I was like, well done, son. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son. Uh, but yeah, Madison's mm. right down, right down in, in 39th. Um, so mm. you know, I, I don't know what the kind of impact of that ha has been. Obviously, Son's. Um, only kind of recently recently come back um, and how much of an impact that had on, on Spurs kind of in general. Um, but yeah, two assists uh, in, in four and, and being 39, maybe is a bit of a concern. Because I was looking at yeah. Madison, you know my love for Madison. I was mm, thinking, could I go healthy. for him? It is. Mm. Could I go for him over Son? But I don't think you can really make a case. And he's not even in the top 10 for chances greater per 90. That's really you'd, surprising. You'd expect, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. 2.34. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of midfielders from Bournemouth, because I know we're all looking at them, um, it's uh, yeah. old Cliver who shows up top um, in in twenty third. His XG on point of night is pretty good. Not point four mm. eight, and point yeah, not point four eight um, is is pretty decent. Only four point six million um, as well. Uh, four starts in six, but he is could be the one. Yeah, I mean, if you're free hitting in twenty nine, why not? Why not go with a, a real differential option? There, Cliver, um, you heard it here first. I mean. And even if you're not, if you're going to, well, if you're not free hitting 29 and you're wild card in 30 or 31, then you can afford to probably go a bit rogue. I guess a midfield slot, though, is quite precious, isn't it? So, mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got like Garnacho, for example, and, you know, that could be a move that I do. But then, I mean, I'm looking at my team and thinking, well, who would I bench? I've got Watkins, Solanke, Harland, Saka, Foden, Palmer, Son. <laughs> what am I going to bench yeah. one of those for Cliver? <laughs> it seems a bit, mm. seems yeah. a bit risky. Um, Odegaard's showing up well. He's in 11th. We've mentioned him a few times. Um, if you did want to go a kind of a different route to Son, um, 0.58. High, really high chances created. I think only De Bruyne is, uh, is higher than him um, over the last uh, six. And then you've got uh, Old Havertz in fifth over the last six. 0.73 elite numbers. Mm, okay, yeah. I elite. Yeah. Mm. Sunday League, not long ago, though. Like, yeah, <laughs> I only said he looked like a Sunday League player in that one game. I came round to him in the end. It was you that mm. said he'd never make it, I believe, in mm. the end. Or was that Werner? He was one of them. he'd never make it. Arguably, if he's at Chelsea for 60 million, he's made it. Like, no, you, you, you said... <laughs> I, think, I, I think it was Werner. I think you said Werner has just got pace and he would eventually... Yeah, I didn't like Werner. No, 
Yeah, so, I think yeah. we were, we were both a little bit more positive on. Speaking of pace, by the way, in ninth there, Elanga, he's going to be coming mm. in a few teams for the blank as well. Yeah. I didn't realise he'd be quite as high as that, to be perfectly honest, because mm. I've always preferred Gibbs White because of the penalties. If you had to choose between them for the blank, are you are you firmly on Elanga, Mark? I, he's in my free hit team that I'm showing mm. tonight. Is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, other, he's yeah, um, interesting. He's very frustrating, but he, he's he's basically either getting the chances or creating the chances, and he's mm. such an outlet. And um, yeah, Nuno knows how to get the most out of pace because obviously he had Traore for a while, and you know he always liked to play him and try and get an end product out of him, which is very difficult. But Langer's got more about him than Traore. He has got an end product, and he's, I think he's got what twelve, thirteen attacking returns this season. Really good, really good output, and um, yeah, like it. Yeah, I really uh, like, James, I really James, like James that Hoyle. comment. <laughs> James Hoyle He's says, "I wouldn't go right. Clover. He's at risk of being benched for Harvey Barnes." Comedy <laughs> genius from James Hoyle. Love that it. Is very, very good. <laughs> really like that. Oh. Uh, Gift him a membership for that. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are thinking of Tavernier, he's right down in forty seventh um, with his five starts, zero point three two. Doesn't show up in the top ten for any. Uh, any of the kind of key stats and his stats are all right without anything really kind of standing out. Mm. I, I just, I just don't think it's worth it for a Bournemouth mid. I think you double up in defence and go Solanke yeah. or you just get one, one of each. That's You're about as far sense. as I'm going to go. Yeah, that's me. You know me, this stream. Mm. Talking lots of sense. Um, interesting that Douglas Louise does show up highly here. He's in 12th, uh, 0.57. He wasn't even in the top 30 um, over the season. Mm. But lately, mm. that um, that has increased. Is that coincidence or is that indicative of a different role with Kamara being out well they are playing Tillemans in 10 so perhaps yeah. since they've moved to that system um, without playing the two up for top I mean they're playing Bailey wide and Tillemans in the 10 so mate, like I said they're mm. fluid Tillemans McGinn Lewis very fluid and I think that allows Lewis to bomb forward and Tillemans obviously is capable of dropping back to a deeper mm. midfield role from the 10 so it's probably I mean I, I haven't looked at any evidence of this but I Grasping at straws, I would say it's down to that. Mm. As made me get Kai for the first two games of the season, not going there again. Thanks, content creators, <laughs> says Webby. Completely he means Andy fair. There, doesn't he? He, mean, he means he means slippers. Slippers, says, yeah. Slippers was banging on about Havertz. Yeah, something must have been him. Must have been yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's it for midfielders. Unless there's anyone else you two want to mention? No. no, other than saying SMB says Elanga's place under threat from Harvey Barnes. Not quite as good the third, <laughs> the third time. Not the joke doesn't work. So I I rate it. <laughs> Do you? I still okay. like it. James Hall got there first and it was better. Yeah. Than, okay. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, thanks to Doy um, for the for the super chat. Just saying, great to see the triple threat on. Uh, cheers. It is, it is a nice stream with the with the three of us. Good to have you. Good to have you here. Uh, Andy, um, just before we move off midfielders, just to mention the three Arsenal mids at the top, Saka, Trossard and Martinelli. Look at those stats, 0 0.93, 0 0.89, 0 0.85, and then Havertz is in fifth. So you've got four mm. Arsenal mids in the top five uh, yeah. for midfielders over the last six. It's, re it's a real shame. I know like we don't want to, it's not a shame one of them isn't injured, but if you could guarantee <laughs> starts for uh, for Trossard, yeah. Yeah. He, would be, he would be such mm. a such a fun pick. Mm. Uh, but interesting his chances created per 90 is zero. <laughs> yeah, not 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 creating any chances at all. That is that is that yeah. is surprising. Isn't I thought it, it was yeah. surprising because he he he, had, he, had, he was good. Um, you know, for us at uh, creating chances. Uh, but yeah, oh, I'll have to check that. That doesn't make sense, but it could be right. It could I, be, I just think be it's really really. Selfish, I mean, look at Bowen's not point five. Yeah, barely anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, forwards then um, over the season. Uh, player I want to throw out there for this week, Nicholas Jackson. Why? <laughs> Because what? is XGI not What's only benign, it's 0 0.73. It's Werner and now Jackson. What are you trying <laughs> to do? Are Jackson, you deliberately yeah. trying to mislead people in there? Against I, I, Brentford. Haven't, haven't we oh, had enough of these content he's creators? <laughs> he's, he's, that's what he's doing. He's like, if I want to get 100k, I'm just going to chuck in these random Look players. at his stats over the season. They're very impressive. Surely he's got yeah, a big haul yeah. coming. Yeah, been impressive for a while, haven't they? Yeah. Since, since day one, really. So. Well, I'm, I'm saying now that this is his, his week. No this one's buying it. No, no, one, no one's buying that. <laughs> okay, fine. You wait. You wait till Jackson scores. Uh, and I wanted to mention here Ferguson um, down in thirty seventh. <laughs> I'm just so disappointed with, mm. with Ferguson uh, this year. Like he is young. He's like eighteen years old. He's obviously starting for Northern Ireland. He's like been in, in and out of the Brighton team. It's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. But I really, really thought he would get 
between 15 and 20 goals a season for us. Be our main striker mm. with all the creativity we've got around him and just really push on. And his underlying numbers are bad. Six goals and three of those were a hat-trick. He scored in like game week three or four. Yeah, just a shame. Hopefully What's he can... What's gone wrong? Just just like the very... I mean, not a settled team. Do you think that's it? I think it's not a settled team and I think it's an injury he picked up quite early on um, as well, which mm. he... It kind of... I think it affected him more. And then he was out of the team for a bit and then he's come into a team where there's been so much, you know, transition. I think if we had like March fit for the season and Matoma was, was around and... You know, we had the stupid man playing all right. I know there's a lot of ifs, but I think we a settled team playing like we did last year would have seen Ferguson do really well. Mm. Um, but I think he needs you're, the team around him to to perform those games. Um, we've got Fozzy asking, yeah, he, is he getting is he getting flamed? In the oh, he's Republic. He's Republic Ireland. of Ireland. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't even know his own players. And he's, oh, same country, asked. isn't it? That's not a good moment. Oh, speaking oh. sense, speaking <laughs> sense this dream, isn't it? God. Quick, quick, shut him up. For God's sake, Andy. <laughs> Deary me. We uh, won't have him on on a Friday again, Andy. We'll make a note of that. But, I've had my... Yeah, we'd never make that mistake. I've had, a, no, I've had a alcohol-free Heineken. I'm, you know, I'm short as alcohol-free. Am I the free? only one drinking? I, had, I did have a, uh, a mm. cider at first, but... You invited me in and said, should we get the beers in? Well, Mark came in with a cup of tea. I was, <laughs> I was sat in my chair f- shivering three hours ago thinking I wasn't even going to make it. <laughs> I'm a hero, basically. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not tipping Jackson, you're not. No. Uh, the only other player to mention here, we mentioned earlier, and for a, for a mixed response, I'd say, um, is Werner. I'm going to mention him again. <laughs> 24 from this oh, list, 0.46. Flogging it, isn't he? You, you, yeah. don't, you don't think he's got any opportunity to do well against Villa's high line in, in 28 and then like, you, the game against Fulham in, in 29. He's not even a dead horse you're flogging anymore. Like, the horse is in the glue factory, mate. Like, just stop it's, it's talking about Werner, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a dead horse, I, it's I, a vegor horse. Can I, I like mention one. one person that isn't even on this list? Mm-hmm. And, Semenyo. and it's uh, Semenyo, yeah. Mm. yeah. I think I Semenyo could be... It's such a shame he's not a midfielder in the game because I think he would be the one that people might go for. But yeah. I think Semenyo could be that person. He's, he's definitely a risk. He might not 100% play both, but he's actually in quite... You know, he's playing quite well for them at the moment. Uh, so yeah. I think he is somebody where if you wanted to go for somebody... If you can't afford Solanke, I think you could go for Semenyo in the double. So he's, he's 0.28. He's 41st in this table and uh, 0.28 yeah. over the season. Um, over the last six, he's 0.20. So actually his um, XG is, isn't on the climb, but you're absolutely right. He's always caught the eye for me. I always like the look of him. Yeah. Yeah. So you're all right to suggest a player who's 41st on the list of forwards. <laughs> I couldn't even name 40 forwards <laughs> in the league. And yet I, su- I suggest, you know, German internationals, Werner and Havertz and get slated. No, yeah, I we'll let it. the chat decide. But I see yeah. how it is. Yeah, <laughs> um, I did a poll earlier, by the way. Just the results of that were: is anyone oh, yeah. anyone not captaining Haaland uh, this mm. week? Seventy um, percent said they were going for Haaland this week, which which isn't too surprising. And actually, I think probably half of the thirty percent probably <laughs> are probably going to end up captaining him anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're going to talk mm. about captains in a bit. But yep. yeah, it's going to be another overwhelming Haaland. Yeah, I think in well, hour four, we're going to get to captains, aren't we? That one? <laughs> already an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, are we okay? I reckon an hour and a half. I it just we... seems longer tonight with, with you tipping oh, Jackson cheers. and Werner. <laughs> that's, <laughs> nice. that's nice, isn't it, Andy? <laughs> if it feels long for the people on it. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody charming, that is. Uh, oh, uh, I wish I just like, got back to my deathbed and <laughs> sweated God. out this, this fever. Um, <laughs> fever. For, fever. <laughs> uh, fever. Forwards over the last six, we've got Harlan Watkins and Solanke. They're going to be the, the obviously the most uh, favoured three, I think. Uh, assuming Solanke um, isn't isn't suddenly out of the double game week, uh, but it, it bodes well for them. Second, third, um, and fifth. I highlighted Werner. But I'm not going to mention him again. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Look at Ferguson though with his two starts. Mm. Uh, his XGR yeah, on put it benignly, yeah. 0.08. Yeah. Also, also, am I am I the only person that owns the striker at the top of both of these lists? You, you still well, got Darwin. Darwin. I think you probably still, still got Darwin. Yeah. yeah. What are you yeah, feeling for Darwin? Darwin. You, you fancy him against Forest? Well, he's, they've come out and said he's in contention to play. So I, I've mm. got him. I'm not. Oh, gonna you're going to get Mitchell off the bench. 
I'm not. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I'm not going to take a hit to to get to Solanke this no. week. So mm. yeah, no, I'm keeping Darwin. I'm playing him because it, Richarlison's now out. So I Darwin swear to God, if this is the week Darwin gets a hat trick, I will. Oh, I'd love I, it. I, I will, I'm done. It. I I'm not coming on next week. <laughs> Seventeen pointer for me. That'd be lovely. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely not. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather tip Darwin than than Werner. That's for sure. I think you're all right there, I'm back in Werner next two. There you go. Yeah, well, I think I've got an admirer in the chat, by the way. I think Bateman's got a bit of a thing for me. Yeah, hasn't he? I mean, considering Bateman yeah. hates all content creators and is constantly <laughs> having a go at them, you've done well. Yeah, he does, done he well doesn't mean it. us when he's talking about content creators. He doesn't mean us. Slippers, that's what he means. Yeah. <laughs> just, just all slippers. It's nice that Slippers Thank takes you. the full point of it. Although I've lost Slippers as, as an ally now. I've said Republic and Northern <laughs> Islander. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Not, yeah, Thank you, Bateman. I'll, I'll check you my OnlyFans uh, account <laughs> later on. Yeah. That's probably what your emails are, Andy. Just thousands of yes, emails from Bateman. It's in, all Bateman. In suggestive poses. <laughs> <laughs> you are, yeah, in one day, you are 28 gigabytes over your storage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all the videos. Oh, Excellent. Uh, let's take a look at some potential free hits um, for, for 29. because I, It's a you... very big very big font. And, uh, and <laughs> it is, isn't it? it well, is. it's, it's, it's a big week, Mark. We've got a... <laughs> you know. Uh, there it is. Um, this is the free hit you put together. I believe, Mark. Me? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll recognise it. <laughs> this is yours. Slightly different to the one you showed yeah. last week. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Flecken, Poro, Doughty, Reguillon. So, back in the Brentford defence at Burnley, which we saw one from the attacking data. Pratt's isn't a bad idea, despite Brentford looking awful. Um, obviously, you get save points Flecken, which we've seen high recently. And Reggie, as we know, offers a bit going forward. Then midfield, Madison, Bowen, Son, Bailey, Alanga. Tony Watkins and um, Tony Watkins, never heard of him. And uh, Son, <laughs> Son, then the captain. I think you know again the Rashard news today probably changes our idea of who we would captain for a free hit in twenty nine. Mm, yep. Moving it off Tony at Burnley to Son at Fulham, I think would probably be the way that most people would go. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it looks strong enough, doesn't it? I mean, I guess there's question marks over whether you would go Madison, would you go Alanga, would you go Bailey? I don't think that midfield picks itself as easy as people are thinking and if you've got Tony and Watkins anyway and you've got you know three of that five in midfield mm. you're okay I mean I'm I'm now thinking seven is the seven is the minimum it's those five time. with a couple sprinkled a couple of yeah, like potential so. fun ones like you hope for a Porro Hall or mm. like an Alanga kind of masterclass it's it's seven I think seven is is bang on that's that's what mm. I'm looking at if I could get to seven um you know, for a seven with a minus eight, though. Oh, yeah, but you've know. got a free hit later. I guess it's about what the value of the free hit will be later, right? And, and we're presuming that 34 won't be good. Mm. But I'm with Andy about, well, maybe you bench boost 34 and you free hit 37. I don't think that's a bad bad tactic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, anyway, that, I, I I don't hate that. Andy, this is the one. We all did these separately. I mean, they're, they're all pretty similar. It's not going to kind of blow people away but this mm. this was your one you've, you've got a slightly different route though um you've gone for a, a, a double west ham um yeah west ham I've, gone for, I've gone a little bit more on the kind of you know going with the teams that i think it would win in the in the game week so i think luton could potentially beat forest so i've gone for the barkley and morris uh there with the set pieces <laughs> which is Mark You're on the wrong mentioned, stream obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I've gone for that. I've gone for the, the triple spurs, which I think if you're going to free hit in 29, you've got to have triple spurs, mm. really. Uh, and then, yeah, I've gone for the double double West Ham defence with Watkins up top there. I've, I've noticed and I've got Tony as my... I've got Tony as... <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's that. this is one of the things that people are mentioning, and I think you've got to you've got to talk about it a little bit, is that obviously you're going to have some of your players maybe potentially playing against your other players. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you've got to be happy. There's only four fixtures. So you've just got to hope that, you know, you get those points where other people don't. I think I think Reguillon is a good shout. I think, you know, there is the potential of, of just stacking certain teams and going, say, triple Brentford, going triple Luton, going triple... Villa or Triple West Ham, whatever you think. Mm. And I think that would be a good shout. You know, pick 11 players from just four teams and hope those four teams come in. Because if you get that bang on, you're going to be absolutely loving life. Obviously, attacking-wise, you maybe don't have to do that. But, uh, yeah, I think it's good. Interesting, though, that um, neither of us went for Douglas Louise in this free hit. And obviously, I, th I would have thought most people would be like, yeah, get Douglas Louise. Oh, I got him. Don't oh, worry. Oh, you've got him. Yeah. Don't see. worry. I've got him. <laughs> Yeah. I really like the Morris pick, Andy. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think, I think that, um... especially with um, 
um, what's his name out? Adebayo out, and obviously Morris is on pens as well. Yeah, I mean Morris's underlying stats don't show up amazing, zero point three one, um, but his his conversion is really good um, at twenty eight percent. You know, uh, four goals and two assists in in his uh, in his five starts. Mm. So he's not he's not like a kind of a sexy underlying stats player, but he's a you know he he, he gets he gets the job done, <laughs> shall we say? Yeah, I think he's the key man on set pieces. Where you know, traditionally we think set pieces, the threat will come the centre backs, but it's not. It's Morris who they aim for, either for the knockdown or the direct threat. So, and Forrest are going to struggle at set mm. pieces. Um, Chris A saying the forest hype is strange. There's no hype, but I think we'll concede at least one to Luton. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not unrealistic. We are going to. So Morris, I think, is a good bet. Yeah, I mean, with with my free here, you know, I've, I've oh, sorry, that's yours. Uh, had enough of, of that. Yeah, I've, I've gone for Gibbs White, but it, that could easily be Elanga. I, I like them both. I think it's just if I go for Gibbs White or Elanga, I'm not going to want to back the Luton defence. So that's why I'd go the other way with and, and mm. just hope for a Forest. A clean sheet in that. I mean that that could be that could be Regulon, for example, and then hope that that Brentford keep it tight. But I don't really trust Brentford, so going double on them, um, I don't know, feels feels a little bit more risky. I don't think there's anyone to trust really in the game. No, I mean, know. Maybe Spurs at Fulham is perhaps the the surest bet, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah. my 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 team is Flecken, Adogi, Murillo, Moreno, Madison, Louise, Son, Bowen, Gibbs, Wyatt, Tony. Watkins so yeah it's it's kind of there's like seven that we're kind of both all three of us are agreed on and then those extra mm. three or four spots little tweaks um yeah I think uh yeah I mean you could go double Spurs defense for example and, and just back Son and yeah if you think that's going to be a lower scoring game yeah there are different ways you can play it um it's mm. a I still think even even those only four fixtures it's still are, are you both definitely signed up for it then? You're definitely committed to it. No. I am. No, nor am I. Yeah. Right, no, because so I because I could because I, I could wild card next week. Yeah. I got to do either or because well, I, I don't have enough players for free hit for well, Andy, 29. Let's have a look at your wild card oh, yeah. that you've, you've played <laughs> ahead of this stream. That he's uh, going exactly. to play the, after this stream. <laughs> this is the one you sent us. Uh so is this if you were if you were to wild card this week, which I will say yes. you're not doing. Um but if you were yeah. to wild card this week, is this the kind of thing you put together? So this is, if I was to wildcard this week, this is the kind of thing I would do. So this would give you some good fixtures this week. It would give you five doublers. Obviously, this is without transfers. So this would give you five doublers next week. And it would give you nine in the blank game week. But obviously, you'd have two transfers to use by the time you get there anyway. So I do quite like it. I like the five doublers Can you read it out for, for the pods? Oh, sorry. Yes. So, yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Uh, so it's got it's Neto in goal, Doughty, Udogi and Gabriel at the back. Son, Bowen, Saka and Madison in the middle with Solanke, Haaland and Watkins up top with Ariola, Barkley, Region and Senesi on the bench. So you've obviously got Senesi, Solanke, Neto and then Doughty and Barkley who play uh, who have double fixtures in the double game week in 28. And then in 29, you've got your nine with two free transfers that you're going to use. I do like it. Oh, Mark's gone. Where is he? Yeah, I, I'm back. It's all right, I'm back. Where are you gone? I don't know, I just dropped out. I don't know. I just got Yeovil's connection there for a little bit. And I'm oh, you both gone now. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> oh dear. I'm still here. I think my camera's gone. I'll turn I'll turn the camera back. Oh my yeah. god. Can you not hear can you hear me? Yeah, right? we yeah, can no, hear you back. Yeah, fine. Andy, where have you Hello? gone? Hello. Where? Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, I'm back. Um that was my moment as well. Um so so it gives you everything you want in terms of twenty eight and twenty nine. The only thing I would say is it does start to lose its potency as soon as you get out of 29. So from game week 30 onwards, it's quite tough. My biggest thing was, and I've and I've spoken to both of you about this as well, is I desperately want Salah back in game week mm. 30. If he's fit, Salah is the biggest player that I want back in game week 30. And it's how do I get Salah back? And yeah. funds are a little bit tight here because obviously I've gone Son... <laughs> oh no way no, gone again? Right, you're back, you're back. It, oh it, good it, it went out on son you just said son oh it's no he's gone again oh, i love shocking. it love oh, what is it's going been on so Gremlins, good for ages as well i know i know just like, he just he just said son yeah so he's talking about getting salad back. hello he's, he, yeah he's back right. Cal- for too long oh he's doing robot uh, hello? Voice now. yeah <laughs> hello god um 
And yeah, it's how you get Salah back. So obviously yeah. we've got a lot of funds tied up and a lot of big players here. I think you'd have to lose Son because I think you would have to you'd have to lose one of those big midfielders and obviously Son's the one and it's whether you're happy moving forward with Madison. But I do think knowing how you're going to get Salah back is key. I did try and play with a few, do you just get Salah now, knowing you have him moving forward. Mm. But of course then he's now he's injured, he's not playing this week, so that doesn't really work. With all <laughs> oh my god this was the master oh, right. plan with all the injuries this week I do think wildcard 28 makes a, a lot more sense than wildcard 27 which is why I'm still thinking about it potentially for next week but yeah dissect it what do you think about it I, I actually don't hate them but I don't like the fact that you're going to be a little bit weaker straight away after 29 so you're going to have to have killed it in 28 mm. 29 going forward after that which kind of like l lends itself to the wild card 30 in order to get Salah in and if you're wild card in yeah. 30 you're not going to free hit 29 are you so mm -hmm. yeah. the Salah consideration is important as well people are suggesting that you're uploading videos for only fans which is breaking the internet <laughs> connection Andy, so, clicking yeah. for all those emails from Bateman yeah sort of I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that your internet's been fine until you do a monologue about the wild card and then it just, <laughs> <No>. just dies <laughs> I mean, waiting for it as well. It's it's an all, it's an all right team. It doesn't like it's not the most exciting, is it? I mean, I, it's not your fault. I, yeah, I'm not saying you could have put something more exciting. I think it's very sensible. It's just I look at it and think, well, Watkins, Harland, Solanke, Son, Doherty, Gabriel. Mm. Like I'm going to have Neto, and like I'm I'm only saying me because I'm I'm going into 29 with a pretty weak team. So I think there's still going to be people with a weak team who've got a lot of these players in, and then say, like, okay, well, who are you? Who are we actually wildcarding for here? Barkley, Regulon. Senesai and other Spurs mid, like it, I, can that be better used in thirty thirty one when, like you say, when Salah's going to be back mm. and it's going to be difficult to get him? I think without m moving, like you're basically going to have to hit big returns over the next three weeks to justify yeah. it because I think the potential from thirty is is higher. But yeah. this is that, this is what you'd is, need to build if you were wildcarding now for sure. Yeah, and yeah. that that is the biggest thing with it is you're going to need to have a really good couple of weeks. You know, because it, 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 we don't want it to be like the double game week with Liverpool and City where people obviously took a lot of hits, whatever it is, and, and then it doesn't turn out the way you want it. The, Bournemouth and Luton are going to have to kill it in the double. Mm. And in 29, you're going to have to hope that those players do OK as well. Because from game week 30 onwards, like I said, you're going to want Salah. Like If you look at Salah's fixtures from game week 30 onwards, you're going to want him. So you just need a plan for that as well. I genuinely don't hate it though, because there's going to be a lot of people taking hits. Like I've looked at a few things and they're recommending minus eights, minus twelves, and you're thinking that all makes sense. But that is another way that you could obviously mm. do quite well over these next two, three weeks is that other people are taking minus eights, minus twelves across the three weeks and you're not. So yeah, I, I don't hate it. I genuinely don't. And I think next week could be a week where I do it potentially. The other thing is as well, there's going to be more injuries. Like look at Richarlison this week. Everybody thought I thought he was I was going to have him for the blank. I don't. So people could be taking hits, and obviously it doesn't work out for game week twenty nine. Mm, that's so, right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I don't hate it, but then same thing could happen with a wild card. You could play your wild card and get injuries, and all of a sudden you're still in a not great boat. So mm. yeah, I I do think it's one of those things where people can go whichever way they want, depending on what their team is, and there's no real wrong way of doing it. But I do think wild card next week looks better than this week personally. Yep. Yeah. Agree with that, Mark? I agree with that. Yeah, I do. And I think Andy makes a really good point about Salah. It's like, look look at how you're going to get Salah back in 30. And that might actually guide what you do. Mm. Because if mm. you if you can't get Salah back without the wild card in 30, that's probably going to dictate that you don't free hit in 29. Um, so, because I don't see the point in doing the free hit 29 to wild card 30, as Andy said earlier. So, um, yeah. Good stuff from yep. Andy, which is what I expect on a Friday night. That's what um, we regularly get. That's what I, I, I will say as well, because I haven't mentioned this yet, the no Haaland route, mm. because that is a route. If you went Tony, Solanke, Watkins instead of Haaland, then you've got one more player for the blank. And if you actually like factored in how many times you're going to captain Haaland in the next six weeks, you'd be surprised how little you're going to captain him. Yeah. So... Yeah. I think, and obviously he's got the blank as well. So that is a genuine route you can go down. But he is 14.5 million now. Mm. And a lot of people are going to maybe struggle to get him back in. If you think it's hard to get Salah back, it's going to be harder to get Haaland back. I mean, Haaland has Liverpool, blank, Arsenal. So those three, you you mm. could go about him for those three. I'm sure I'm yeah. sure you could. And I think we're all going to be captaining different players in, across those three fixtures. 
Anyway, especially in 29, he doesn't play. Uh, but then, I mean, in 31, it's Palace, um, it's Villa, and then it's Palace, Luton, Spurs. So from 31, that could be around the time you're looking to get Salah back and then suddenly you're having to clamour to get Harlem back mm, as well. So, yeah, yeah a, bit, a bit risky. Um, yep, very nice. Uh, fixtures, let's um, smash our way through these before we get on to our, our teams. Um, Brentford, Chelsea. Uh, Andy's been a bit maverick with some of these picks, Mark. You and I have gone almost identical across these. Andy's gone a bit, uh, a bit rogue uh, for some of these. Uh, Brentford, Chelsea. <laughs> uh, we've both gone for a Chelsea win. Andy, you've gone for a, a one-all. Is that is wow. that more hopeful that Palmer doesn't what? doesn't get something? Don't know what you're talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just say Chelsea are just so unpredictable every week. Mm. And every week I think, oh, yeah, this should be easy for them. And then I think, oh, hang on. No, they, they can't play football half the time. So, yeah, I've gone one all. Away from home, I, I don't really like backing them much away from home. So I've gone one all. Yep. Uh, Mark, any, just, just you think Palmer's going to... Yeah, gonna no, I, I just think Brentford are poor at the moment. And uh, I think that Chelsea will have too much for them. And then, yeah, Brentford have lost Ben Mee as well now. So I think defensively they're really suspect and there's no confidence there and, and yeah you've got to be worried if you're a Brentford fan they're going to get dragged into it I called a Tavernier brace a couple of months ago I'm calling, did? A, calling a Jackson brace in this one oh god well I'll tell you what if you pull that one off I will bow down <laughs> to you uh, Everton West Ham I've gone for a draw one all uh, you've both gone for a 2-1 uh, West Ham mm. yeah I just think Everton could frustrate it's, I think this is going to be a, a quite a cagey kind of game this one because it's two teams who some like kind of sit back and counter a bit and I don't know kind of one of them is going to have to give a little bit to, to the other one to kind of make this a bit more open. I think this is this is this is probably going to be a pretty dull game. I'd say. Have we got a garden centre game? We have. I'm trying to see if I can spot it. Oh yeah, yeah I can see. It, it. would have been it, it would have yeah. been that one if it was on TV. I can see. Yeah, it. yeah. It's <laughs> quite easy the one. <laughs> uh, Fulham Brighton. We've all gone for a draw. Uh, Andy and I have gone for a higher scoring 2-0 uh, Mark you've gone for a 1-1 we haven't we haven't beaten Fulham since 2017 um, at Craven Cottage they are our real bogey team we struggle last year it was a Man of Solomon uh, breakaway goal um, mm. which which put us down uh, last year when we don't we, I've, I've seen us dominate games and, and not win we we absolutely battered them that game uh, and he, he scored from a, from a counter attack it's very upsetting but yeah I think there's goals in, in this one which makes Gross a reluctant sell, I think, if you if you have got him. Uh, Newcastle Wolves, we've all gone the same result, 2-1. Across the board, 2-1. Mm, look at that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I fancied Wolves in this one if, with, with Wang. I just don't really know what they're going to do without him. Who, who plays a, Who's going to play a centre-forward? Good question. Um, don't know. Doesn't, no one springs to mind. I, I guess um, I guess they're going to have Bellegarde and then they'll have to play, what, a, a false nine of some kind? Could Neto play false nine up top? I guess that's what they do. I mean, like, um, it'll be Bellegarde who gets in the side, I imagine. I can't see where... The, yeah, they're, they're not going to have a centre-forward, I don't think, unless mm. they play what Fraser is their reserve forward. Don't see it. Don't see it. So I think it'll be a false nine. Yeah, I think yeah. that tips it towards towards yeah. Newcastle. Because yeah. their, their defence is poor, but if they're playing against a team without a, a striker, yeah, uh, just, just edges it a bit. Uh, Forest Liverpool, you both gone for a 3-1 Liverpool. I've gone for a 2-1. I think it's going to be a... A game, just given Liverpool's injuries, we don't know what what team they're gonna they're gonna start. Um, two patch up squads in in a row now um, for their for their wins. I mean, they won both games. Um, that like Dan's getting the brace against Southampton, like yeah. incredible, incredible stuff. Yeah, but they got they got Darwin and Sabozlo back, haven't they? So they're going to be stronger than you think, I here. Um, yeah, I think so. Yep. Uh, Spurs. I'd, I'd just oh, like sorry. to say, by the way, I I sent my predictions in the group chat. Yep. And then Mark did it separately. He's obviously copied most of my predictions here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't I mean, see the like, He does that. I, I don't Imitation's look at what, the greatest form of flattery. I don't like. look at WhatsApp before deadlines just in case I get any information that I need to use. So I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> getting Walker leaks, getting score leaks. Uh, we, <laughs> it's not my style anymore. <laughs> uh, Spurs Palace, we've all gone for goals in this one. Uh, we've all bought Son. I wonder, wonder if there's a link between that. Uh, I've gone for a 3-1. Mark's gone for a 4-2. That would be a hell of a game. Uh, and Andy uh, with the with the 3-1. Son surely gets a couple in this game. I, I, he's got such a good record against Palace as well. It's just, I think Palace you know, under Glasner are going to be more attacking. And, and if that's going to be the case, then they're going to present opportunities to Spurs. No Gahey as well. Yeah, exactly. So, 
Yeah, I think it'd be a good game. And, um, and Palace will test them, I think. But, yeah, I think Spurs run out. I mean, is the, and I think there'll be lots of goals. If, yeah. you're, if you're going for four goals in that game, is Son not on your radar for captain? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Son, Saka, Haaland, they're all in the mix, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And I can't even mock you because you did go against Haaland last week, which I was very, very impressed mm. with. Uh, very, very Thank brave. You. Yeah, uh, Luton Villa we've all gone for goals again for Villa in this one I've gone for a 3-0 that is a hopeful clean sheet I've, I've had Martinez yeah. for so long <laughs> uh, looking at defensive data doesn't fill me with confidence but yeah Luton have been a bit bit disappointing lately uh, you've gone for a 3-1 mark Andy with the with the 2-1 anything to say yep. about it? No. Uh, I, 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 yeah I see Villa being too strong for them I don't think I think Luton are struggling a bit. They're getting some injuries now. It's getting a point in the season where the, the depth of their squad is going to cause some problems, I think, because you know they're playing a lot of games. Their first 11 is good. Their way of playing is good, but they don't have a lot of depth. And I think now teams are going to find them out on that. Um, mm. But I don't see a Villa clean sheet. Mm. Yeah. And then it's the, it's the garden centre game, isn't it? Let's be, let's be yeah. honest. Uh, Burnley, Bournemouth. Hang on, let me just flash up there. There Flash is. up the dim. There it is. <laughs> uh, I mean, particularly if Solanke's out, then no one other than the most uh, devoted Burnley and Bournemouth fans are going to be watching that. Uh, even if he plays, I think I might still try and make some excuses not to not to watch it on Sunday. Uh, I've gone for two one Bournemouth. Mark, you've gone for a clean sheet two nil. Uh, yeah. Andy, you've gone for a draw. You've gone for a one all. Cheeky yeah. little point. I don't know. I don't know why I've backed Burnley at home a few times this season, and I think once they've come through for me. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think this could be... I think I was looking at this and thinking Solanke might not play. And if he doesn't, literally everything goes through Solanke. So if he doesn't play, or if he only plays a certain amount of minutes, then I think Bournemouth might struggle He'll to, play. to do something. He'll well, play. I don't I think know, Harvey, play, but... Barnes, Harvey Barnes could <laughs> yeah. be a factor. <laughs> you can't use that joke again after <laughs> mocking the chat. For... <laughs> I, 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 I would be amazed if Solanke didn't play. Yeah, in that no, I would be as well. Absolutely. If the scans come back through clear and he's been playing with that injury in most of the games anyway, why wouldn't he just carry on? Oh, you, do you know something we don't? Have you got a little cheeky yeah, message? Just looking at my uh, my WhatsApp chat. Yeah, you're not oh. in it. It's a super secret club oh. that you're not a part of. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're right. I think he does likely start. I don't think the injury is as bad as, as we've perhaps perceived with the MRI scan talk mm. and all that. But yeah. yeah, I think he could start. Yep. Uh, and then finally, Man City United. I've gone for 3-0. Mark, 2-0. Uh, Andy, a uh, uh, consolation goal, <laughs> but still a three-one, yeah. uh, a three-one loss. I might, I might end up with Gonatre playing if if Slanky is out. He's my first sub, mm. um, so hopefully he can score another overhead kick like he did against Everton yeah. in the in the Rooney mould. But yeah, we're all we're all expecting a pretty comfortable City City win here, aren't we? Um, yeah. It's so I don't want a captain Harlan this week, but I just think he's going to do well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, so it sucks. That's the content that they pay yeah. for, Andy. You see, that's yes, the, that's why we've got the memberships and everything. You know, he, he, as that's there with the tip that uh, Harlan could do well in the home. That's game. why we brought him in this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's um, why he's here. That's why he's our guest tonight. You yeah. Yeah. No, don't def- <laughs> don't don't go with him. <laughs> Last, right, next time you're bloody hosting this, Mark. That's all I'm saying. If, if, if this is a late oh. tackle, if this is a late, if you're classing this as a late tackle, then well, I ain't doing the bloody hosting like oh, the mug. Joking. Toys, toys out of the pram there. <laughs> I had a fever two hours I ago. I did. That's in a bad way. You should have seen me. Uh, and then the final that game. That explains the Werner talk. Like, <laughs> yeah, the fever. The fever, yeah. Uh, Jackson fever. And then the yeah. final game is Sheffield United, Arsenal. 3 uh, 0 for me, 4 mm. 0 for both of you. I, I, it's it's going to be a. It's going to be a route, surely. It's going to be to nil, yeah. and we're all going to be ruining not not only more Arsenal players. I think when I predict the Monday riot. night comes, absolutely yeah, a route, riot, yep. riot. Yeah, no, I think it will be. I think it will be. Then Sheffield United really frustrated us when we predicted the same for Wolves. So maybe they can do it again. Mm. But Arsenal are Can't very much it. a different proposition. Can't see it. Too much creativity in that side. Set pieces are such a threat. Mm. They've got Saka and Trossard's playing well. Yeah, too too much, too much. Right, captains. Uh, this is the, the kind of the debate, and, and like we said, there are there are options this week. You've got Haaland, you've got Saka, you've got Watkins, um, even De Bruyne if, you, if you've held him. If you want to go against, uh, if you want to go against Haaland, um, Richarlison, Mark, we've still got on the list, but he's he's now out. Yeah, I've um, made this before that yeah, that news yeah, came in. Points. I mean, Saka eight returns in last six game weeks, seven goals. Mm. Points are off the scale as well. Four double digit hauls and and a nine is it? 
So like basically yeah. five double digits in a row. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, it, is temp- it is tempting, isn't yeah, it? Very tempting. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if Slanky was fit, he'd be an option against Burnley. We know how poor they've been defensively. Son's mm. a great pick. Palmer's a great pick. Foden's the man in form for Man City. Bowen's just scored a hat trick and he's playing Everton, who have been a bit leaky at the back. Loads of options uh, this week. And It just comes down to your confidence in United and how, yeah. ca- how long can they keep City out for. Haaland will get something, no question. Um, but if Arsenal do route Sheffield United, Saka could easily outscore mm. him. He's only got you know, one goal each and Saka outscores him, of course, right? So particularly if Arsenal keep the clean sheet as well, you've got to think if an Arsenal clean sheet, that's an extra point for Saka straight away. Mm, it is really tempting, I well, think. And same with Son. I mean, Son at, at, yeah. at home to Palace. You know, clean sheet mm. point, extra point for the goal. I'd, I'd back, I'm, I'm backing Son to get one. I, I can't see mm. how, how he's going to blank in that match. I, no, I think Palace can score though, whereas Sheffield United, I don't know if they will. Mm. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, they're all they're all they're all great picks. And as um, as Tarek points out, twenty nine goal and assists now for. Um, oh, hang on, we've got the overlays. Let me just put it on. Where's he going? There you go. uh, just put that little yeah. overlay on. Um, twenty nine goal involvements for Watkins, and he's playing a Luton team with no recognised centre back mm. in the squad. So you got you got to fancy him to get at least a goal in that match, mm. as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you, when you look at Saka. Um, given that they're probably going to keep a clean sheet, if he gets one assist, one assist is all he needs, and Haaland's got to score then to mm. beat him. Yep. Because one assist and a clean sheet point, that matches that matches Haaland's four points for a goal. So then it obviously comes down to bonus. But, you know, what's more likely, a Saka assist or a Haaland goal? It's mm. not much in it. No. You would say a Haaland goal, but it comes down to United, isn't it? It comes down to how bad are they going to be on the day. Um, I think we kind of, yeah, I know. And Andy's, yeah. as a United fan, doesn't trust it, right? I can if, see yeah. Here's a question for you. I mean, because the, the Man City Man United match is on the Sunday, so it's sandwiched in between Spurs and Arsenal. I, I hate saying it, but like, how much does that impact? Like, if, say Man City was on Saturday evening and you had Spurs Palace on the Sunday and then Arsenal Sheffield United on the Sunday, would that influence you at all? Do you get influenced by the time the game is? I do. I no, not the I time. Don't. I mean, I, I sometimes get influenced with the games live. I'll be like, you know what? If it's 50 50 cool, I go with the player that's on mm. TV, which is completely rubbish. You know, I shouldn't do that. But it, <laughs> I don't that's the content really, people want to hear, Mark. Really, yeah, if it really is a 50 50 cool, if it really is that type, yeah. which it rarely is, right? It rarely is a 50 50 call on the Cats and see, unless Salah's got a, fix, a good fixture and, and Harlan does it, hasn't, then, then it might come, other factors might come in. I would be. I would only be picking my captain based on any points I think they're going to get, and I think Saka could easily outscore Haaland again. Yes. Another question for you, and this one's to Andy: If Haaland hadn't scored five goals against Luton, mm. would you be looking at other mm. players more? No, I, 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 Haaland was my best captain before that happened. Anyway, I, I, I look at the the United team and I just think this is going to be a mauling. I, I really do think it will be. Do you? Especially, it's, yeah. I like we're going to be could be playing McTominay up top <laughs> like we're not going to be having possession it's just going to be constant attacking I think and we're just going to be hoping to hit him on the break if we can but the... <laughs> I, I do think it's close with Saka though I do think Saka is yeah, it, yeah. it's because I've seen a few projections where Saka's just slightly ahead of Haaland as well and yeah how often does that happen mm. so yeah. I do and, and... I, I do think Saka's close what do you think about City like because I mean Arsenal I think will play and keep coming and like once mm. they're 3-0 up they won't take the foot off the gas I guess there's a chance Saka could go off at 3 or 4-0 Nelson yeah. comes on so Saka only gets 70 odd minutes right I just think our City, that team, well, if they're two or three nil up, are they just going to keep going at United and beat them yeah. by five or six? Do so, you think? I mean, guess I think it's because United, it's Man they U, want yeah, to. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Any other team, yeah. they probably yeah. wouldn't. Any other team, they'll be that's enough. We'll manage this out. We'll take players off. But against United, they'll probably go. It's five nil. Well, let's bring De Bruyne on. Let's make it worse. Yeah. You know. Do you? I was, do you both remember the score? This watch. Sorry, Annie. sorry. Go on. No, go on. Yeah, I was saying. I, I remember. I was saying this to to my mate while watching the Bournemouth game, mm. saying that. They are the kind of team that goes 2 0 up and then just keep possession. And if they yeah. score, they score, but we're just going to manage the game. And yeah. I can remember this happening years ago with Liverpool, wasn't it? Liverpool were the players to, to own because they just scored countless goals every game, didn't they? And City really weren't that team. And I, I do kind of think that's happening now. But the problem is, Harlan could be the one that scores every goal that they score in those games. So it's obviously tougher. But Saka as well, like I know Saka's in a purple patch at the moment, but for the majority of the season, 
their goals have been spread out between mm. those. We've seen that, you know, four yeah. of the top five are all Arsenal mm. because they're all very good and they're all, you know, got the output. But mm. Saka is in that purple patch at the moment. I don't think this is indicative of who he is as a player in terms of... Yeah, I agree this is with him can do that. But like I yeah. said, one Saka assist is the equivalent of a Haaland goal. Yeah, get that, yeah. Because the but clean sheet's anyway. yeah. yeah, I know. I don't know. I, 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 I mm. do think, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'd love to see you captain him twice, again, you know, instead of Haaland. Haaland against Bournemouth and Haaland against United. Saka twice. You'd come up smelling of roses there, but... If yeah. I, I I know it's ridiculous, but like I said, if if Son was on the Sunday, I would be. Go I'd probably go for him. I, I just is, I just can't go for him on the Saturday and then have to watch Harlan. It will like, ruin my weekend. I need yeah, the, I need the, the thing, hope. Yeah. I need the hope. <laughs> so little hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the fact is I don't know what Palace are because they've got a new manager, I was just about and to so yeah, that's yeah. the problem. A bit more right? than unknown, yeah. Yeah, mm. so you can't. I don't think you can do it without. I mean, all the data we've got on Palace is useless, really, yeah. because they're under <laughs> a new manager. So, yeah. for all we know, they could be a top five, top four or five side at the moment. We just don't know what Glasner's going to turn them into. I presume they're going to be more attacking and more open, more, which yeah. might, yeah, maybe. But I'm gone. I've done that with my prediction, but that's because I copied Andy. Um, but I'm not <laughs> about to do that with my cat and see. <laughs> I know. I know you two hate talking about it, but do we think Saka is going to be above 100 percent this week in EO? No. Do you not? No. I thought he was going to be. No, I don't think so. Because I think Haaland will be really? so so overwhelmingly favoured. So it's what is he? I think he his ownership be. is 65, right? So he's got to get... No, I just I mean, don't say. He'll like, be 90. He'll be 90. I mean, he's almost 100% in the top 10. 98, days, 99. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It'll be close, but I don't think he'll go over. Be just, just under. Mm. Um, Kieran Sykes says, as Mark and Andy, is there a better combo out there? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> almost definitely almost yeah. certainly there is but you're watching us instead so depends what, what that combo is doing right? yeah. I'm sure there's something we do what? really well, <laughs> well yeah, you know. what, what's he mean what? we've done what <laughs> oh, where's this going oh we're uh, back on the only fans oh, show aren't we yeah. <laughs> we are yeah Mark's getting his swang out again <laughs> uh, James Hoyle welcome to the Godfather tier thank uh, you so much see yeah, be, be nice up. to someone, compliment them on their humour and they'd sign up, you see. That's the ploy, you see. James Abs- fell for it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I, lo- I really like this from Andy, Go- Alan Goldsmith. Is that Alan? Is that the Alan that hates me? Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it's not. Um, he's come up with a little nickname for us that we can use. Uh, Mardi Zanka, which is an anagram of As Mark and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We might see like Mardi Zanka at the so weekend. That, I was going to say, yeah, angry Brentford player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, and then a super chat from Christopher Ricon. Uh, Son Odegaard or Son and Saliba uh, would be third Arsenal spot. So basically, it's Odegaard or Saliba. Because <laughs> Son's in, in both. Yeah, I think the same. Go. Yeah, Saliba long term. I mean, Odegaard is a really good punt over the next two low when it's when it's Sheffield United, Brentford. Mm. So it depends on what you've got to do. If you've really got a tilt, you go Odegaard. If, you're, if you've got a decent rank and you're playing long, long game, you go Saliba. Yep. Yeah. Andy, you agree? Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, cool. Uh, and Hydra Rob Jones, who's joined the Apprentice tier as well. Good to have you here. So not really the referee, appreciate. Rob Jones, thankfully, judging from the photo. Because I don't want him joining. <laughs> uh, oh, will Andy be here next week for Black Box as you have to throw it by half? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, all... this is like the new Ben Mee banner. Like, he's never yeah. going to get old. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, let's take a look at our teams then. Going into 27, we've all made the same move. So this is going to be quite a quick section uh my, you can see my team section as well if, if you're more interested in my my rationale for this uh, on the channel but my team is martinez trippier gabriel estupinan sakason foden palmer harlan currently captain watkins and solanke um i've done i've done the huang to son move it's do i take a hit for estupinan to either saliba or senesai mm. oh, senesi sorry um mm. i'm i'm tempted just to get senesi and and just Hope he doesn't get booked because I mean, even if he gets booked, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get booked in, yeah. the, in the game after. I mean, he might, but it makes sense. It? It. Clean sheet at Burnley, maybe, yeah. and then you've got him for twenty nine, uh, twenty eight. 
I, I think, think it makes, makes sense. sense. I think it makes mm. sense. Because I'm because if I don't do it now, I'm probably gonna take a hit next week because I want yeah. Neto and the double defence anyway. So why not just do it now? It's just down to the booking, isn't it? If he really gets it, that'll be frustrating. I don't, I, it'll be all right. He'll have a little word in his in his ear. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. But I could <laughs> just play Doty and Doty has obviously got the crossing potential <laughs> against <laughs> against Villa. So this is what people want. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. <laughs> be all right. It'll be fine. Don't worry about Backs it. it up with data. How can you doubt that, Andy? <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, this is you, Mark. Yeah, um, I don't know whether to start Dubravka or Kelleher because double Newcastle could be too much. But when you think Bellegarde could be false nine for Wolves and I know Newcastle are bad defensively, maybe it is. But I, do I really want to cheer a clean sheet for Liverpool when I'm against my team? But I don't know. At the moment, it's Kelleher, Trippier, Gabriel, Walker. Um, that's if I get a tip off beforehand, obviously. Foden, Bailey, Palmer, <laughs> Saka, Vice at the moment, Saka, then Watkins, Solanke, Haaland, Haaland, captain. If I go He Chan to Son, then Son comes in. It'll have to be Bailey, won't it? It has to be Bailey yeah. bench because who do you Oof. bench there? And then you hope, I guess, that Solanke doesn't play. Um, if you really want, I don't Bailey think I'd on. do it. I think I'd just you play would, Bailey. You wouldn't get Son. I think Bailey could do well. Yeah, I know. I could, yeah, I don't doubt it. But Son up front against Palace, and we don't mm. know what they are. But I think I think Son is more likely to get me through a turn than Bailey. Yeah, I, I suppose. Do. That's close. I get, I get Werner personally. Yes, <laughs> Slanky to Werner. Do exactly. it. I'm Maverick. <laughs> I'm not that Maverick. Yeah. Uh, and this is you, Andy. Yeah, oh dear. So I got, oh dear. Stop it. Stop it. So I got Debravka. They want you all, Carly. Saliba, <laughs> Saliba, Bradley, Estepinian, and then I got Foden, Saka, Gordon, Son, with Harland, Watkins, and Darwin up top, with mm. Taylor, Richarlison, and Mitchell on the bench. Taking a risk on Gordon there, aren't you? But yeah, well, apart from that, am I? Uh, well, the barn about? start could come in. Oh, oh just, no, just set it up. That was too easy, Andy. How did you fall for that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'm getting tired. This is past yeah. my bedtime. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. I think it's the same for everybody. Yeah. The, no, the right. thing I will say is, though, I'm quite excited owning Darwin if he starts. Oh, I think Bradley he starts, as well. So he'll yeah. break me. Yeah, and Bradley. I think yeah. it could be quite fun. To be fair, mm. it's, this could be a team that just destroys me. I am really tempted to do Estepinian out to Gabriel. I am really quite tempted. But then if I do wildcard next week, that seems silly. So I think I'd be locking in the free hit. Um, yeah. He, I, I am tempted to do Gabriel. I'd be very, very surprised if he started with Stupinan. Yeah. And yeah. The, the goal threat mm. from Gabriel, like you, the six, you, you're going to get that point, those points pay back. And then you've got the goal threat yeah. on top of it. I, I, I would do exactly. it personally. But. Honestly, and it, and it is that peace of mind every week. Like not only Gabriel every week, it's just horrible. So I think I may do it. People are loving, loving that Harvey Barnes banner. Oh, <laughs> just what carry on giving yeah. absolutely <laughs> loving it uh, perfect cool that is it so just to recap on the black box leagues yeah. uh, Mark did these which is why his name is highlighted uh, oh. <laughs> top of the apprentice league never miss a trick 1660 uh, Ryan on 1563 Lisa on 1544 uh, and me on 1532 I'm catching Lisa up though only seven I uh, caught seven points up so I'm 12 points behind uh, now um, we should probably get you in that league, Andy. No, actually, no, I don't want that because you're ahead of me. No, let's not add another one into the Apprentice League, this please. This is all that happens on this stream. You just go, we should invite... No, 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 wait, no, I don't remember. <laughs> we, we got a social coming up. It's a big pool of people. Add... No, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but congrats to Sundeep, uh, who is top of the league, 1,813 points. I mean, that is that is huge. He's number um, one in the world. Is Sundeep number one? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yes, I think so. Yeah, a yeah. legend. Didn't, didn't I tell you that the number one in the world oh, joined yeah, our league and it looks really sus? Absolutely. This is as pretending that he hasn't tracked him down, emailed him, please join yeah. our league and yeah. make our league better. We give you, we give you Walker leagues. Yes. <laughs> are we joking about that now no, <laughs> no it's done it it's bad taste no. it is very bad taste yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard Smith in second Henry Thornycroft in third uh, Seamus in fourth John O'Shea in fifth uh, Marco is in sixth, Kevin Prendergast in seventh, uh, Christians in eighth, Keith Conn in ninth, and Chris Melk Menemin in Very ninth. good. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy ninth as well. That was not good. <laughs> that was just about <laughs> getting it right. Uh, and in our Godfather League, uh, Mark is unfortunately seventh and shows up in this list, which is very annoying. Um, but congrats to Richard Smith, who's 113 points ahead of Mark, uh, top of this league. Uh, Pratik in second, Davy Fructor in third, Conor Gray in fourth, Tim Gold in fifth, Nick Baker in sixth, 
Then it's Mr. Mark Southerns in seventh with Nathan Joblin in eighth, Chris Tang in ninth, and Chris in tenth. Great seasons you're all having. Right, we've got to do Dahl's uh, super chat, otherwise he's going to go to war with us. Yes, uh, on, have you still have you pinned and, it? And, uh, I know I haven't pinned it, but oh. I've got it here. Uh, so, uh, Wildcard 28. <laughs> This is a long one. Neto Zanessi, Gabriel Doughty, Son, Bowen, Lewis, Barkley, Saka, Solanke, Watkins. Flecken, Reggion, Tony, Adoggi. One, three and 29 gives me 11. What's the thoughts on that wild card? Wild card 28. So he's wild card in 28 to get the the double game week players in and he's getting Neto and Zanessi double defence for Bournemouth. We, How we, similar we does it look that. to Andy's wild card he's playing this week? Uh... No, you know, yeah, it's pretty similar, pretty similar. Well, it's, good I mean, it's, it's very, it's it's very strong. Um, he's getting Fleck and Reggion and Tony in for the Fleck. twenty-nine double <laughs> Fleck and sorry, he's he's written Old Fleck. Fleck. Yeah. Um. No, I like it. I like I like the route with the Bournemouth. I think that's the right way to go. Barkley, you're getting a twenty-nine player in there, and I think he'll do all right in twenty-eight. Um. I don't think you, you can't knock it really, can you? I think that. That for a wild card. I mean, the only thing you can question is whether it's right to wild card in twenty eight. But as as Andy said, I think he, he you said earlier, didn't you? That you prefer it in twenty eight and twenty seven. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. Yep, yeah. Nice, perfect. Oh, well, we're remembered uh, for Dallas Super yeah. Chat. Uh, see, yeah, we do get yeah. to them if you drop them in. Um, if they're quick, we uh, we we chuck them in as we go. But if they're kind of longer ones like that, we tend to leave them to the end. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us. We've had cons- sort of consistently around sixteen, seventeen hundred people watching. Uh, this stream, uh, which is absolutely amazing. It's helped. I feel a lot better now. I feel kind of rejuvenated. Yeah, I loved it. I thought that was a, this. a very enjoyable stream. Me too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, Andy, hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, good. <laughs> no, cheers for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Please, yeah, uh, thanks, for be- thanks for being honest. That was very good of you to, to drop in. No, yeah. no, 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 no. no. We're, not, we're not playing this game. We're not playing this game. Not that at all. Oh, he uh, welcome that. back. He like welcome that. back anytime, mate. I'm going to say. No pocket money for you next, next time. <laughs> <it>. No <laughs> housekeeping for Andy. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no invite to the Godfather uh, meetup. Uh, either um, excellent thank you everyone uh, tapes is absolute barnstormer of a stream uh, ed has called us legends uh, thank you very much um, com says good luck everyone fpl alum cheers to you m darrowell had a great time and our favorite delia says loved it guys thanks so thank you all for watching and uh mark you and i i guess we'll be back next week um as normal no because i'm in Sofia oh you're in week. you're in the bulgarian yeah. curtains the, the place Sofia. yes i'm bulgarian oh, curtains. Nice. yes yeah, let's see yeah. let's see if we can get one with you uh, and if you're up for it and, and get luke on do one with the three of us cool that'd be nice um, i'm jealous now I know. I've, I've, yeah yeah you don't imagine streaming from your you weird yeah I did, I did i did stream from the uh, bulgarian hotel last time but i don't i can't guarantee my my internet connection it's better than andy's to tonight <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i was gonna yeah. say yeah. <laughs> it's a bulgarian, bulgarian connection from yeah. andy. <laughs> great stuff well we'll sort something out anyway there uh, yeah. will be a bad box next week we should go ahead uh, but yeah thanks both and let's uh, do this again sometime see Cheers. you later good night